Daddy in the building. And, and what's going on October 29th? Uh, uh, uh. Make sure y'all tune in October 29th. Main event on ESPN Madison Square Garden. Let's get it. Let's get it. You know what's funny, bro? Yeah. I got floor seats, right? Yeah. And this guy messaged me like 10 minutes later. He's like, yo, what seat you got? I'm like, I'm like, E1234. He goes, I'm E. Five, six. We're sitting right next to each other. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? We are back with another one, guys. We are on an episode 10. 10 episodes, hour-long episodes. I've put in an hour, two hours. Let's see, like, let's say, like, 12 to 15 hours. Uh, that's another five hours of editing on top of that. Uh, so another 50 hours on 60 hours. And then to make clips for another hour or two, that's another uh, 70, 80. I've put in over 80 hours into this podcast. This is episode 10. And we have gotten some blessings. We have almost 1 million views on a Kid Cudi, Ty Ray. Um, I was going to say Ty Ray Woodley. I don't know why. Ty Ray uh, podcast clip. We have a 220,000, and that's on Instagram, which is surprising. On Instagram, on my page that has 200 followers, for everyone that doesn't know, go fucking post some goddamn reels. We have 220,000 views and 129,000 views on TikTok on two clips, one of me and my mama, and the other clip, I have no idea who the other clip is with, but God bless the people that went viral. And I actually, I'm actually capping. I think Haley on Facebook hit a million views on her tattoo of her finger in a donut. So that was actually a milestone that I'm forgetting about. But Instagram shows me every day because I can pin it. Facebook, that video is lost in the sauce. And you'll never be able to find it unless you're scrolling through reels and never seen the video. It'll probably pop up. But uh, we're back with another episode. We got King Re Promotion Rivera AJ. The man has like 10 different names. The man does boxing promotion events here in the city of Worcester, local boxers, some that may be 18-0, 19-0, 20-0, 20-1, 21-1, I think. Uh, so he has a, 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 a few, you know, big leaguers. Um, wanted, to just, wanted to just grab one of his biggest fights. We are going to uh, head to Camp Get Right. So we get the whole uh, 100% feel of a boxing ring. We're going to have the beeping in the background. Hopefully people working out in the background. Hopefully some special guests in the background. Uh, and, yeah, we're going to be in the ring chilling. Uh, let's see how the setup goes in a few minutes. After I talk to you about some news, we'll get straight into it. And then we'll get straight into the motherfucking juicy podcast. You feel me? Listen, Tom Brady and his wife reportedly hired the voice lawyers. And during the time that this news was announced, Antonio Brown, and let's say Antonio Brown, not as a teammate, but as an artist trying to promote his music, an artist trying to create drama because that's all rappers know what to do to get their name relevant. Knowing the man won't be relevant in football, but now connecting the football connections that he had, the man gave him a chance on the Buccaneers, on the Buccaneers, and um, he literally posted his wife on Instagram the quote unquote saying, "Put that shit on with with the these fingers." Like a nervous fingers. Maybe he meant to say, put me on. Put me on to that shit. I don't know what the fuck he was trying to say. But you're coming at Tom Brady. First of all, someone that's not in the industry of your rap career that is failing in life. Um, the man was supposed to be in the city of Worcester the other day. And he's like, yo, talk to my lawyer. So you can already tell he's bad for business in the rap community, in the hosting community already. So... The man doesn't change, you know, if, if he's an idiot. And so I say people don't change, bro. And I hate these fucking podcasts because you motherfuckers come on this podcast and try to tell me people change. People don't change. This idiot got kicked off the field or he left for whatever reason trying to advocate for uh, people that are injured and, and still playing apparently. And now he's talking shit because the QB from the Miami or something like that got knocked out, had a concussion, came back later during that game. So he's still talking shit about the sport uh, that he's not in and probably not eligible or, or ever playing in ever again. Uh, 
let that man be. I don't really care what he has to say anymore. But um, someone that is dealing with some serious issues, not that dumbass issues like uh, my boy Antonio Brown, is Tory Lanez is still facing up to 24 years in jail in his next court date next month. So we all seen the process of Megan Thee Stallion got shot in the leg and it ricocheted off her leg and burned her leg. But we never seen the goddamn leg. Where are the bruises? Where are the scars? Ladies, I'm not saying he didn't do it. Uh, if he did do it, if there was cameras, if there was witnesses, that man would be locked up by now, you know what I'm saying, with no bail. So, you know, uh, some of the artists get, you know, pat on the back because they are artists and, you know, they have to travel for work and stuff like that, so they need it. But if they, if this wasn't a worldwide artist, any other black man would be locked up right now until the court date that decides without bail that he is the shooter or not the shooter and the process might take forever because during the pandemic the process did take forever but we're not in the motherfucking pandemic anymore so let the man live Megan Thee Stallion has dropped the charges you really want to see a man go to jail for 24 years he didn't kill anybody no offense but 24 years is ridiculous maybe a year or two five years maybe some community service since cardi b got community service the other day for beating someone up at the club uh i mean it was a dang, dangerous weapon hopefully it wasn't an illegal weapon uh but we don't know the situation uh, tory lane's an idiot for getting himself in the situation but the baby dropped the song saying he was fucking on megan Thee stallion during the time the day before he got she got shot up in the leg and that's why he's blackballed for disrespecting woman that's why he's blackballed for disrespecting the lgbt community if i said that right if I did it, I'm sorry. But uh, what can uh, the baby do? Keep talking shit and his Boogeyman song album that completely flopped. He's at 25K predicted during the week. Jack Harlow set the standard in the beginning of the year with 100K on an album that was fucking doo-doo, but had a good couple songs. And every artist after that, I think only Post Malone matched that. But every artist after that had like 70. Corey Ray had like 13. So the baby's being compared to Coyle Ray at this very moment. Oh, my God. I don't know. I, I, I just see that. Guys, Kanye West wore a White Lives Matter t-shirt. Let's take a deep breath. And, uh, you know, I don't know how low this man can stoop. And this is like, uh, like I've been telling you guys about the Will Smith and Jada Smith. It feels like these guys are looking for attention. The Christian Rocks and Blueface, look at the age difference from these 40, 50, 60-year-old men still trying to be relevant. Jada Smith, Jada Pink is still trying to be relevant. I don't know what's going on with them outreaching and, 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 and attacking the world and and with some oblivious messages. I don't even know what any of those fucking words mean. I don't even know if I used them correctly. But for some reason, we all know, I'm not going to say we all know, but his idea was that Black Lives Matter was a scam, and we all knew that Black Lives Matter was a scam, quote-unquote. I'm not saying we all knew, but, you know, we talked about the $6 million mansion. The brother had an 800 k salary to work security for the rest of the year. Um, I don't know what's going on with that. Hopefully, they're getting audited and, and dealing with all that bullshit. But the man wore a White Lives Matter t-shirt. And the worst part is that Candace Owens, I'm pretty sure, the other black woman in the world that everyone hates in the black community, which I find her a queen because she be talking her shit. You know what I'm saying? I just seen a video today about... Uh, people want to be oppressed and want to talk about slavery from four or five hundred years ago that has nothing to do with their generation, their grandparents' generation, their parents' generation. And she's like, there's black people in the back complaining that, and they're oppressed and they're talking about slavery. And then there's black people in the front cheering on USA. And he called, she called everyone a uh, spoiled, privileged, spoiled, privileged person in the united states of america and we're getting to the point where we have heard your message black lives matter that's a scam but uh yeah they're i guess she's thinking they're taking it too far i'm at the little you know zone where you know we had to write well i'm not condoning riots and stuff but we had to you know get on the headlines we had to have people speak for us uh people were dying people were going viral people were unarmed and uh, now we're at the point where the last video I actually reported was a woman apartment complex got shot at with her kids in it. And then they rallied up in front of her apartment because the police shot an armed man that didn't want to leave the room that was hanging out the window with a gun. And the sniper did his job. 
And they try to rally up and the girl was crying saying, this is not a George Floyd situation. This is a crazy murderer. Like he almost killed my children. And the people were telling the woman to shut up who survived. And they said, you're still alive. So I don't know what's going on in that situation. There is a lot more to handle. And I actually reported it on rap TV at rap at RAP about the white lives matter t-shirt. Uh, and a couple other topics that we're going to talk about in the next few minutes. Christian Rock. And I'm so sorry. I'm going to apologize right now. And I'm, I'm going to say it later because we have a queen of the week who is someone that didn't leak this S tapes that we're about to talk about right now. But actually put Christian Rock in her place and showed her who goddamn Blueface is. Who we all knew Blueface was. You know what I'm saying? The man's not a loyal man. The man does not want a girlfriend. The man's not looking for marriage. But, uh, yeah, we're dealing with another Christiana Rock situation where she dropped her S tape, first of all, on Instagram that was just, like, him speaking nasty to her, him speaking like, hey, baby, this is your pussy type vibe. And then a couple other tweets came out, and then the baby mama got into the situation where she was sleeping with him the day that was happening. Like, he was waking up. She was waking up him up, like, yo, like, we're, we're going to talk about that later. But she's like, yo, like, cuz, like, shit's going down right now. Like, you're sleeping? Are you sleep? So literally the day that everything's going on with another girl and Christian Rock dropping the sex tape on Instagram. So she decided to go on Twitter and actually drop an ad, like a dead ass dick in the butt type vibe, like full throttle, full, you know, moaning for everything. What is wrong with this woman? Uh, we're going to talk about the tweets about uh, I'll, just, I'll just wait for that till later, but. The, the woman has seven tattoos of the man and doesn't claim the man. That's all I have to say for now. And we're going to get into it at the end of the, the podcast. Kai Kennett, Kai Sennett, Kai, I don't know what his name is, is considered the Mr. Beast of Twitch. Considered the peewee of Twitch. Peewee and, and Mr. Beast. I don't know why it was peewee and Mr. Beast. Isn't there, there can only be one person on YouTube, but he's being considered the, the Mr. Beast of Twitch at this very moment. And that's because he just hit a hundred thousand subs. Now we celebrate 80,000 subs and with the 80,000 sub, he passed, surpassed XQC, who I guess was the number one Twitch player, live nation search person on the app. But now it's Kai and Kai did it with no sponsorships, with no promotions. Twitch hasn't even like used his photo or featured his video on the top performing platform or anything. And the man had his mom call him and tell him how successful and how proud he was. And I'm pretty sure every content creator in the world felt that from the bottom of their heart. Cause I know I will never get that from my parents because they don't understand what I'm doing. I just hit over a million followers on all platforms. God bless America. I'm out there 500 K on one platform for the first time in my life. Uh, I'm only 4,000 away and I'm going to use these podcast clips. I'm going to use my rolling loud clips to hit that number by the end of the week. But uh, Kai hit 100K subs. Apparently, he's number one at this very moment in the Twitch world. Uh, we all know a couple people have been banned from that app, which may, probably made it a little bit easier. But as a black man in the community that started a year or two ago, you guys still believe you cannot do it when a man that hasn't been in the game for that long, hasn't been that famous for that long, took over a fucking app that a bunch of white people, no offense to the white people, but like I said, Twitch has not sponsored or put an ad or featured him in the front the front page of their Twitch pages. That a bunch of white people owned at the very moment. Now a black man is number one. So respect to Kai. We're going to talk about Kai more often and, uh, you know, black power. Even if it's Latino, even if it's Asian, anybody... I don't want to say anybody that's not white, but you already get the point, bro. Get some more motherfucking colored brothers in the, the top 10, you feel me? Listen, YNW Melly is being uh, framed. I want to say framed now at this point because someone was snitching, saying that he was trying to get out of jail, uh, that they were going to use his uh, prosecutor lawyer to bring in handcuffs so that the handcuffs can, can break them out of handcuffs and they go on a run and i don't know what the fuck kind of bullshit plan that was and uh the mom has responded after the allegations and they're trying to say that they don't want the lawyers to meet him in person they only want him to meet through zoom he doesn't want they don't want anybody in the world to 
be able to see him in person so they're trying to use stupid allegations like that stupid claims we put quote unquote i actually reported on rap tv as well just letting you guys know i am a rap tv affiliate i am a rap tv host from this day forward god bless america with a million followers and god bless america with me getting connected with rap tv so why w melly is dealing with a lot of dumb accusations just like gunna and young thug and gunna actually got cleared for all um some murder activities all like all the crazy activities which means he should be able to get bailed out and uh and there's no witnesses so a lot of shit is going on and like i said if they were not international stars international rappers international worldwide musicians any other black man in this game compared to tory lanes compared to ynw melly compared to young thug and gunna would be sitting in jail feeling like shit even though young thug and gunna are sitting in jail feeling like shit and probably never getting out for another 20 30 years until another lawyer comes in and says that man is not guilty LAPD has a finally arrested, and it's the last topic before we get into the podcast, but LAPD has arrested the right people. We owe an apology to the wifey, the baby mama. Everyone claimed that her dropping the food and where the location was, the exact Roscoe's that they were at, was the reason why they got bagged and they got robbed and they got shot at. But apparently now the information, and I'm pretty sure the guys are snitching nowadays, on themselves is that the father well let me get into it. a 17 year old killed uh, uh damn huh? allegedly sorry okay a 17 year old allegedly shot the fatal shot at pmb rock and that's the news i got when i reported it and now they're saying that the father actually was there before Met up with someone that actually mentioned PNB Rock was in there with hundreds of thousand dollars of chains. So there's a uh, acquaintances to the the case. What is it called? App- appliances, accomplices. There's accomplices, accomplices that didn't do anything but tell the father that was that was driving down the street or a friend of theirs that PNB Rock was in there with hundreds of thousand dollars of chains. The man left the facility. If I'm using that word correctly Left the facility Went to go get his son The son had a gun on him The father never went Apparently never went into the store Into the restaurant He parked down the street Let the kid go in by himself He said Give me all your shit Whatever the reason was That PMB Rock probably said no And he said Pop, pop, pop Looked at the girl. Apparently, the witnesses say that he actually pointed the gun at the girl and said, "Give me all your shit." And uh, after shooting PNB Rock, and f- he get flipped over, he shot him in the back as well. So we're talking about a stone cold killer at seventeen. Like I want to see what this man's record looks like. If this man was willing to die for a one year salary, I mean, willing to lose his life for a one year salary. But uh, I, yeah. So he shot him in the front, shot him in the back. And then pickpocketed him, took his chains off, took his rings off while he was gushing in blood right in front of him and then dipped. And then they left the car, apparently. The news said that they burned the car. The new news said that they left the car on the side of the road. They never went back to the car, threw away all the clothing on the way to their crib with all the blood and all the the scenery and all the guns and all that stuff. And... um. They just arrested a third person. I don't know what the third person is. Maybe the person that told them. But the father was only the getaway driver. And the fatal shooter was a 17-year-old child. Um, And, you know, I've heard a lot about, you know, a father would at an adult age will probably get 25 to life. But someone that's 17 and underage that does the situation, the stealing, I'm pretty sure the father didn't expect him to kill him. But if it was a killing, he'll probably get five, 10 years. I don't know if that's true. Uh, and he can kill the five, 10 years. And then the mother was ended up in court for their dumbass father and son situation. So watch out who the fuck you guys marry. Watch out. Well, you, well watch out who you have kids with. Because the influence of the father and the child is definitely the father is like, yo, we need this money. Like, we're going broke. Like, we're getting evicted. Like, we need, like, we're, you know what I'm saying? We can't feed ourselves. And if you're in that situation, you know, people are hungry. And just like Fat Joe said, bro, he does not feel bad that the man was robbed. But the man should have never killed him. I think I talked about that last podcast. So I'm going to let that topic die right there. 
Rest in peace, PB Rock. We locked up the people that needed to be locked up. Hopefully, there's more people in the situation. They lock up every fucking person that deserves to be locked up, guys. This is the Maker John, and we're going to get straight into the podcast. The podcast gets really juicy because we got a lot of topics about feelings. We got topics about, uh, bro, just f- figure out weird situations when you're in fights. Uh, we got a couple of relationship questions that I want to ask that, you know, elaborates more than just what the topic or the video, the people I'm talking about. Cause I really want to know, you know what I'm saying? People don't like their private lives. You know, people, um, drop sex tapes and like still get back with that girl after, you know, someone in high school back in the day had a photo here on Twitter. They made an ass, you know what I'm saying? So, and I don't know if they were still together or they're still cool or, Whatever situation happened after that, but, you know, people are crazy. Choose who you choose in life. I choose to be motherfucking single, guys. AJ Rivera, Cam Get Right. Shout out to Ken Ball uh, Sr., I think, or Ken Ball Jr.'s father uh, for letting us use the gym. And we're going to Ken Get Right to get crazy. Um, let's get it. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you guys so much. Uh, it's the Mega John episode 10. Like I said, I put in over 80 hours on this goddamn show and it's breaking, it's breaking millions. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the long show, you'll never get more than, you know, maybe like a thousand or 2000 views. I got a couple hundred and I think I got on Facebook one that had like a thousand or 1200, but, uh, you know, eventually, like I said, bro, some people have done this for 400 shows. Some people have blown up after the first two or three shows. So I'm in the medium of, you know, by the 25th, 30th, 40th show, uh, BFF podcast just celebrated their hundredth show. So, um, let's see what happens, man. Maybe these clips, I got a personal TikTok for this podcast and a personal Instagram for this podcast. Um, Go follow me on all platforms, Dominican John, Dominican John TV, and Dominican John ENT is completely dead. No more promotions unless I'm getting booked as a host, as a fucking content creator, not booking DJs and booking uh, uh, venues and trying to get security. Nah, fuck that, bro. Just give me a fucking 500 bucks or some shit. Give me a bottle and some hookah if you're local, you know what I'm saying? Uh not local because I can't promote local, but let's get into the podcast, guys. You already know the fucking vibes, man. Thank you guys for watching one more time. Dominican John is out, and we're headed to Camp Get Right. I can't thank you guys enough at Camp Get Right, uh, and I appreciate you guys at Camp Get Right. Let's get it. What's going on, guys? It's Dominican John, and I'm back with another one. I don't know what episode it is. Uh, we're almost getting to 10, I think. I don't know. I don't know. It's seven, eight, maybe eight or nine. Who gives a fuck? I'm here with AJ Rivera. AJ fucking Rivera Promotions Entertainment. Believe in yourself. Work hard. Never give up, bitch. <laughs> Listen, my boy, who are you? Tell them what's up. What's going on? What's the flyer for? Where are we at? What's the connections you have? And if they don't want us to shout out the place that we're at, uh, uh, then I don't know. It's, it's all love. Um, this is Camp Get Right Boxing Gym here in Worcester, Massachusetts, 55 Millbrook Street. Um, crack your bottle. I crack my bottle. Home of some of the best fighters. In, in the city right now mm. um, Best trainers as well This gym is owned by Kendrick Ball In the back Actually over there Today Carlos Garcia is back there Rocky Gonzalez is back there Jermaine Ortiz is back there You got uh, Kendrick Ball Jr. fights out of here Kyrie fights out of here So this gym is very well known Some real top dogs Take first Cheers. swig Out of the bottle Let's First swig out of the bottle Okay that's how we get this vibes All right Ooh, thick sugary goddamn it's gonna be a bad night <laughs> all right keep going my bad who else is in the bitch um you know everyone anyone who you know the boys and girls club is where a lot of us started but when you hit a certain age you come over here to camp get right um and the banner back here that's Rivera promotion entertainment a lot of people would say the best Boxing promotional company in New England, but that's for y'all to decide. Oh, he said I'm New England. Say that. I was gonna say trying to show mass, but goddamn, Central you told me the other day, right? And, you know, competition everywhere. But uh, we got a show November fifth, Springfield, Massachusetts. Be there or be square. Nice. Like I said, Jermaine Ortiz is in the back, getting Hopefully ready. Here, some little punching bags and stuff like that. October 29th against Vasil Lomachenko. Oh my god. Um, you have anything else before we start? Any shout outs to your mama, to your to your kids, to your Ma, future kids? I love you. Dad, I love you. <laughs> don't watch this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely don't watch this. This is not how it's gonna go. It's not gonna go down the way you want it. The way you wanna go down, bro. <laughs> you wanna put the cap so it don't spill? Uh yeah. yeah. Right there. My man. 
All right, my boy. So we start off easy, quick and easy. You already mentioned Jermaine Ortiz, Loman Jangles. We got the Flyers, the first thing. So let me explain to you real quick. Ah, we are in down in the DMs, my boy. Any kind of topic of fan mentions, gossip, rumors mentioned on social media. It's the top three. But for some reason, I went a little too crazy. I got five. And I actually had like seven. But I took a couple out. Do a couple in, seen one today, and I was like, ah, this would be gooder, gooder. Uh, this would be better. Um, you know, I try to like, people think this is like a, you know, like you said, pop culture, you know, entertainment, all that stuff. I forgot to tell you guys, the Make It John drinks, the Bane Sue is gonna come on until someone else gifts me another Bane Sue or another brand helps me out. But let's fly. Um, what was I saying? You had seven, you found some better ones. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the, the first segment is like finding comments okay. of people talking shit or a, a crazy video. And then I try to incorporate that into like what you guys do. So like the first part is kind of like not an interview, but it's like you, a part of you guys and how we can get the conversation flowing. So you'll see little by little how it, you know, forms out. But people think this is like a, oh, you only talk about celebrities. But look at all the conversations. You, you've seen the couple podcasts. So you see the conversations that come out. It's authentic. You know what I'm saying? It's like, organic. It's, it's, it's whatever yeah. flows at the time. Like if a shorty has a tattoo of someone's face on their neck. That's and I'm wild. like, would you ever do that? I got a whole conversation about tattoos. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would have never asked you about your tattoos. I didn't even know you zat it up like this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't even have tattoo conversations. It's my, you know those shirtless photos, my boy? You don't got the beach photos no more? I he mean, said you got the dad bod now. Dad bod now. You know, it is what it is. Um, nah, you know what? I, I intentionally hid hid them, you know, in the business world there's that okay. like that like Long uh, sleeve. that stereotype, mm -hmm. you know, tattoos are this, tattoos are that. So, you know, I could always long sleeve it in a business meeting, you know. I'm going to let you know this is probably the dumbest mix. Why does yours look better than mine? Cuz you you got to have the little the Yeah, maybe yeah. that's why. I was about to say cuz the liquor is just at the bottom and this juice is not mixing, so yeah, I mean, they're drinking juice and straight like nice, nice little rotation on the wrist. But anyways, first topic, like I said, Loma Jangles Ortiz, October 29th, Hulu Theater, New York, Madison Square Garden. My boy, introduce it. What do you know about Jermaine? What do you know about Loma Jangles for all the boxing people that don't know anything? Or, yeah, just people. Who, all right. So Loma Jangles, arguably one of the greatest um, fighters, period, amateur and pro. Um, as an amateur, he was 396 wins, one loss, two-time Olympic gold medalist. Phenomenal. Like, he was the best in the world as an amateur twice. You know, yep. the amateurs comes every, I mean, uh, the Olympics comes every four years. Um, he already went up, like, three weight divisions by the time he was, like, nine or ten and oh. Dude's a, one of the top dogs between 26, 30, and 35. Mm -hmm. Jermaine, Jermaine's a different breed. He's another one where um, great amateur career, didn't have the amateur career Vasil did, but he's just one of those guys that just work. You know, he's a workhorse. I mean, you, you see him back there now talking to himself while he's on the bag. Let's go champ. Let's go champ. Don't stop champ. Mm -hmm. He just, he's always trying to improve. He's trying to improve physically, mentally, um, spiritually. Just that's just who he is. And it's showing now. And, and he kept his head down. He grinded. And he got the biggest fight any fighter could could ask for, you yeah. know. Um, I think Jermaine. I think Jermaine shocks the world. He puts the world on notice because I know you. If you you saw the comments, you're on social media. You saw a lot of people. Who's this? Who's this guy? Oh, it's another bump for Vasil. Oh, it's a tune-up fight. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I keep thinking it's a tune-up fight. He knows it's not a tune-up fight. Yeah. So he's gonna shock the world October 29th. So my cousin told me that uh, Loma Jangles actually like. You said 126, 130, one, he won a, He won a world championship at 126. Yeah. He won a world championship at 130, and he won a world championship at 135. But he told me, like, he's forcing himself to go up because there's no competition at the low, low, like the minimum. Yeah. So he's 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 forced himself to be a bigger body to fight with bigger bodies. Yes and That's no. That's a disadvantage, no? Yes, yes and no, because as you get older, it gets harder to lose weight, mm -hmm. as we all know. Motherfuckers ain't cutting weight like, yeah. you know, how we used to. So part of it is... He, it, he doesn't have to try as hard to lose the weight, but also there's more money. Think about it. He's fighting at 135. 
there's Devin Haney, there's Shakur Stevenson, Tiffy Lopez, Ryan Garcia, Jermaine Ortiz. Think about all the names at 35 versus who's at 130. Can the everyday fan tell me who's at 130? Can the everyday fan tell me who's at 126? Yep. It sucks, but I'm gonna be brutally honest. Guys, 140 and below don't get them. This generation of 135ers is different. So now I'll say 35 and below. Mm -hmm. But the lighter weight classes don't get paid like that. You know, yeah. they're not household names, you know, but Tank Davis is there. Everyone knows who Tank Davis is. So, I mean, Vasil's in the weight class where he's going to get the TV fights and the bigger paychecks. I'd do it too, especially it's not that far off, you know. And he's a different, he's a different caliber fighter. He's not, he may not be as big as these guys, but he's also faster and he ain't getting hit. I mean, that defense is elite. He's an, he's an elite fighter. Yeah. What do you think about him coming from Ukraine? Is he Ukrainian? Mm-hmm. So he went to the war. I don't know what he did in the war, but that could fuck with you mentally, physically, depending on what the fuck he was doing over there. Yeah. Which is, I feel like, an advantage on Worcester's side. You know what I'm saying? Because the man hasn't been in training, hasn't been, you know, doing what he's supposed to be doing. Do I you think, think, do you know anything or do you think it, anything like that's going to happen? Little, it's a little bit of both. Because, I mean, I mean, truthfully, man, you know, we have hoods and poverty here in the United States. But compare, like, poverty and hoods in the United States versus, like, Hoods and poverty in like Haiti, mm -hmm. DR, Brazil, Turn Afghanistan, like like third world country poverty is different. So like I already think them European fighters are just wired different. Yeah. They're wired different. They're mentally they're machines. So do I think the war will affect him and what was happening in his home country? No. I don't think it's gonna affect him mentally. I think What's going to affect him is while he was here training and preparing, he didn't know he was fighting Vasil, but he yeah. just stays in shape. He's been in training. Yeah, you months. were over there helping your country. So he kind of maybe has like a one or two month head start yep. on you, which I think that's maybe where the, di but I don't think the war is going to mentally distract him or fuck him up like that. Like those guys are wired different anyway. You know, there's not many people who could see like, Dead bodies and yeah. people getting killed. Like them, them, a lot of them have seen that shit from mm -hmm. from young. They flee their countries because of some of the shit that they're seeing. You know. Yeah. So I just think the the advantage goes to Jermaine just because Jermaine's been here training. You predicting a ten round fight? It's ten rounds, right? I haven't seen Jermaine fight more than ten rounds. No, I think it's a twelve. It might be a twelve round. I think it's a twelve. Woo! Did you see uh, Muhammad Ali's uh, grandson is part of the... Yes, I did. Ah, it's about to be a I'm excited night. for that one. I'm excited. Exactly. I'm, I'm, actually, I'm excited to see him. And actually, I'm, I've become a fan of um, Richard Torres. He just won the silver medal in the last Olympics. He's did a they drop the list? I don't know what the list is. i just seen him on... Oh, no. They dropped the list. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Richard Torres is on that show, too. The, the, nice. That show's actually loaded with talent. All right, valid. It's not, it's not a regular show at nice, all. Nice, nice. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited to see Muhammad Ali's grandson. That's going to be the closest thing to Muhammad Ali mm -hmm. I've ever seen, you know? Um, Richard Torres, I'm excited to see him as well. Um, I see it going, I see it 70-30. I see 70% unanimous decision for Jermaine. I see 30% Jermaine stopping him. Mm -hmm. And the only reason why I give it that low of a percentage, Vasil's never been stopped. Vasil's like never, he had one flash knockdown, but he's never even been like dropped. Yeah, yeah. A guy like that is going to go into survival mode before mm -hmm. he allows. Like, he's not going to... Those guys, like, look at honor for their country. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not bringing dishonor to my country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He will literally hug, hold, hug, hold, and run his way around the ring before he lets Jermaine knock him out. Like, if he's hurt, he's going to be in survival mode. He's going to circle around the ring. He's going to hold. He's going to let the referee separate it. He ain't going to let Jermaine just stop him. Could it still happen? Yeah, Jermaine's a big dude for that weight class. So could it still happen? Yeah, it could still happen. But I see it like 70% Jermaine winning by decision, 30% chance of Jermaine stopping him. And then I also, like I said, I'm using my cousin because I watched my Saturday night UFC and boxing with my cousin. I was talking to him. I said, if he loses, if he loses, but puts on a good fight, is he still valid? Ranked wise? Absolutely. Respect absolutely, wise, absolutely. next fight wise. Absolutely, because you gotta remember that he's considered a tune up to people. He's considered a walkthrough, a warm up. So if he goes out there and makes this fight closer than what people think, off rip, off rip, he's on notice. Yeah. On rip. And then at that point, motherfuckers have to, like, hey, you know, Vasil had, he got a, a name, Nomaschenko, because he had world champions saying Nomas. Mm -hmm. 
Like, just quitting. Like, nah, I either can't hit him, I'm frustrated, I'm done. Or he was just beating the brakes off of them. Like, he's had guys quit. So, even if he loses and the, he makes a good fight out of it, he, his stock still goes up. I mean, it's mm-hmm. like, look, lo- losing to Floyd. Did that f- affect Canelo? Yeah. No, it didn't affect Canelo. Canelo, if anything, that made Canelo what he is today. That's what you're telling me, that because he left to Ukraine, that he was off the rankings. Because boxing yeah, no, still no. continues, what he did, so what he, he has did to was, come It's back. not that he left the rankings. He just re- he like relinquished his his belt. Because you have some when you win a belt, they give you a certain amount of time to defend that title. And if you're not exactly, if you're not defend, that's why injuries like they'll give you a little bit of time. You'll be considered a champion in recess, but they give you that time. If you ain't defending them titles, you you know release them. So, huh? anything else you want to add? Nah, but just to, if you're not going to be there, first of all, this is our chance. N- locally, New England, like New York is right there. If you're not going to be there, um, just watch it on TV. Support. Mm-hmm. You know? That's it. All right, my boy. I got, when you got a doo-doo, but this fight, but this dude's want to fight, right? I'm going to show you the video, and we're going to talk about. Don't tell me he shit himself. He shit himself. No way. Yeah, Which so. One? Ooh, it's my doo-doo. Oh, that doo-doo. <laughs> it gotta be the one with, with the shorts, right? It's it gotta be. So I don't promote violence. I didn't put the whole video, but it is. Yeah, the guy on the on the bottom. Look at on the bottom. It makes sense. He's wearing shorts, so that shit slid, went right down his leg. So, so I want to ask, what have you seen in your boxing events? Crazy snot come out, leaking blood. Like what? What, what have you seen on in the boxing ring? Terrible cuts, terrible. Like gushing, like like fucking hole in their. Uh, head my thing. dad got headbutt one time, right here, and you can see the bone, right mm. here. Yeah, what I've else seen you got that? Um, Badu Jack, the guy that Popeye just fought, yeah. looked like he had a toto on his forehead. He got headbutt, and that shit literally split like. Thick. Yeah. Like, it, yo, it was crazy, crazy. Um, I've seen some nasty, nasty cuts in the ring. I do know I'm not gonna blow his spot up. I do know of one fighter that just let him let piss Pissed drip, himself <laughs> drip down his leg. He had to pee in the middle of the fight, so he just let that shit go down his he leg. Didn't go fuck. Know? Didn't go fuck. I mean, you got water. Nobody could tell. Yeah, yeah. We could tell, you know. So he just let piss go down his leg. Some but football I, players say that they just fucking don't go to the bathroom and just piss right there. I mean, that's wild. That's wild to be like. I don't know. That's wild. There's no timeouts in boxing, right? Nah, there's not. So like, what do you do in that situation? I mean. Most fighters are not eating or drinking anything yeah. like hours ahead yeah. of the fight. One, not just for cramps, but for that reason. So, like, I don't know. I never dealt with that. My stomach's been empty. Yeah. The one time I, like, the one time I, I didn't even feel like I had to shit. I just felt like I had to throw up. I ate Kyoto, and I actually was in this ring sparring. But I ate Kyoto, like, an hour and a half before. Yeah. And then I, like, I sparred. But then after the first round, I was like, fuck, I'm about to throw up. Now, street fighting-wise... If a man said, yo, I got a doo-doo, bro, I feel like there's a respect of, like, let my man go take a shit and then be his ass after. You know what I'm saying? I got a weak stomach, so I will absolutely give you the time that you need to <laughs> properly um, go take your so shit. So you're saying if you tight at somebody right now, you want to beat his ass, and he's like, yo, bro, let me take a shit real quick, you'll you'll calm down for the five or ten minutes that he needs to take nah, a shit? Nah, if you got me that worked up, I'm not going to beat the brakes off of you like that. I'm probably going to slap you and then let you, like, go... Take your shit Like I have a, Like I said I have a weak stomach I'll mm-hmm. be If you shit yourself And I'm near it I'm touching it I'm like I'm uh, Anything Like I'll start th- Now you're beating my ass Cause I'm sitting here Throwing up <laughs> oh, uh, I'm sitting here Throwing up I, I got a weak stomach <laughs> I smell a bad fart And I'm already like uh, uh. <laughs> So it's like I'm not even gonna Take that risk Go ahead Go go properly Go properly uh, you know, I don't know. Do your thing That's what I wanted to know Cause I was like Bro I feel like Cause literally it says When you got a doo-doo But this dude wanna fight It's like yeah, I feel I'm like, like s- Any human being Is like Give yeah. him a Give him a minute my yeah, bro yeah. Like, give If him a I'm minute. really tight If you got me to that Cause I, me I'm like I'm super calm I'm super patient It takes me a while To get to that level If I get to that level I'm probably Borderline blacked out mm-hmm. I might slap you And then be like Alright I've seen know, it Go What? I've seen it before you see me black out? Nah, what are you talking about right now? At the rhino? Oh. <laughs> ah, ah, like, that's my boy, that's my boy. Nah, ah, bro, my fault, my fault. My fault. <laughs> that was just a, a case of a misunderstanding. My bad, bro. My bad. <laughs> that was a misunderstanding. 
Drinks on That's me funny. next time I see you. Drinks on me. I'm dead. Um, yeah, so, you know, I might yoke you, slap you, and then mm-hmm. give you your, you know, if you don't react after that, what am I going to just beat on you for? You know, nah, it's you, you know, yeah. you're my son now. Go take your shit. You my son now? You my son That's now. That's what you said? If I stop, bro, if I don't feel threatened enough that I have to punch you and put you out and I slap you, that's just me making you my son. Like, I'm literally letting you know I have zero respect for you. I just need a little bit more juice. I'm going to go to the next one. Well, let me explain to you the next one, my bud. So the next one is apparently a volleyball team. I guess there's like one black girl on the whole entire team. And um, the opposite school apparently said the N-word. And uh, use, using her, how do I say that? Only her, like no one's seen it, no one heard it, but her on the court in a crowd of hundreds of people. Like I said, you're in the basketball court, like the arena you about to do in, yep. in Springfield. And she said she heard somebody, and then they pointed out somebody, and they suspended that somebody, right? And it was her that heard it while she was walking to the bench or something like that. Was it a fan? It was a opposite fan, like the opposite okay. Team. So it wasn't players on the to a player, a fan to a, a player. fan to a player, yeah, but yeah. it wasn't the player from the other team saying it to her. No, okay, no. yeah, it was just All a fan, right. some of the right. fan, but it was a student. Yeah, okay, and student. The fan. student got suspended or expelled, whatever's going on. Yep. So I want you to hear the statement that you already know. This is right. You don't know who Ben Shapiro is? I think it's Ben Shapiro. You don't know who Ben Shapiro is? This guy's like fucking. He's Jewish. But he destroys every college student on, like, women's rights and, and, like, he'll go crazy. Like, some Andrew Tate shit, but, like, nerdy, like, facts. Like, he don't believe in, like, he's talking about, like, the bio- biological thing. So, he don't believe in, like, trans and, and oh. different pronouns. And he'll go to rallies. And he's not canceled yet? Bro, like, but he says facts. He's, he's like, he'll be like, oh, you in college? You got a PhD in communications? What the fuck do you know about biology? And he'll destroy people one by one. And they'll let, he'll let them go. And mic up and be like, what do you want to say? And he'll wait and just destroy them next. Bro, oh, I wow. promise you, watch one video and you're like, yo, yeah, I like I, him. When we get out of here, you he, have to send me that. He's badass. I, I like savage yeah. people. I like yeah. people that are real. We lack yeah. that in this generation. Yeah, so listen to the statement. Like I said, a fan said the N-word to somebody and they expelled or suspended the fan. I skipped that part. That's the story. But this is what they want to say as a statement. Have we gotten to the point, whether it's in sports, society in general, that depending on the allegation, that determines the speed of the outcome of the process. When that happens, I think you've lost everything. You've, that's not law and order. So I commented and said, yeah, but you're not dealing with the riots that come after. I'll ruin one life temporarily before I destroy a school's reputation and prevent chaos. So that's my, my take. So Absolutely. I said... I would rather expel or suspend that one individual before it gets on the news that a fan said that word and no one got suspended, so the whole fucking world comes and destroys the school. And you know what I'm saying? Now there's protests at my school. Now I'm mm. not getting elite athletes yeah. if they're from the African American or minority um, descent. Like, nah, yeah, you got to look out for what's right. At the end of the day, what's right is right. What's wrong is wrong. And but what do you think? I mean, they said no one heard it. She heard it, pointed that person out, and they but called she, one time. But if she heard it, she's not going to make no shit up like that. That's true. Like, I mean, I'm walking to the bench. If I hear someone call my name, if I hear someone, I'm going to look up. Like, I'm not going to just randomly walk to the bench and be like, hey, that motherfucker called me, mm-hmm. whatever. Like, you know, um, it's a big arena, especially if you're not really looking for it. Like, you know, maybe nobody wanted to rat him out either. Yeah. You know? I don't know. But what do you think about uh, the statement? I, um, depending on the allegation, right away people get besides the topic. Just I just think I just think in general because this is a problem in pro sports as well. Mm-hmm. I think fans just need to be put in their place. Yeah. Um, believe it or not, and it kind of strikes me as a surprise for such a ruthless sport like boxing is, or or I, I mean I I've only gone to like one MMA fight. I'm not so I'm not gonna speak on MMA, but boxing. I feel like our fans are classier. Mm-hmm. Like, you don't really hear racist shit. You don't really hear people degrading fighters and shit like that. Like, Russell Westbrook literally gets into fan fights with fans all yeah. the time. All the time. And I feel like, like, when are you... And there's players that won't come to the... I'm a Boston Red Sox fan. There's players who literally, like, yeah, I'm not playing for them. Mm-hmm. Because one time I was in center field getting called racial slurs. Like, 
Bro, they bro. talk shit about us. I'm like, bro, that's the older generation. I think we're past that already. I thought so too, but I we're mean, not. but I guess we're not. Like, and you can't you know, talk about everybody in this thing. And and you know what? At the end of the day, these people are human beings. Yes, they get paid millions of dollars to do their entertainment for us, but I mean, come on, bro. There, there's got to be a line. At the end of the day, I'm a, like, I look at things differently now. A lot of shit that I would have probably let slide back in the day, mm -hmm. I'm not letting slide now for the simple fact that I'm a father. Like, I'm going to now show my son, like, like, your last name means everything. You as a man, like, you, like, someone, they're not going to disrespect your father, they're not going to disrespect you. Yep. You're not going to disrespect no one else either, but you're going to hold people accountable. And fans just, fans be wilding out, bro. Like, um, Chris Paul's, like, I think it was, like, wife and grandmother was attacked at a game. The other day, yeah. Well, come on to it, yeah. Or last season. Like, some wild yeah. shit, bro. Somebody yeah. put their hand, first of all. The video never came out. I'm, so never, I'm not even gonna say what I would do because people are getting mm -hmm. locked up for what yeah, they yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. But someone comes from my grandmother is gonna be ugly. Mm -hmm. Like that's why I don't care what I do as a profession, basketball for like that's just come on. It's a level of respect. It's a game. It's a game. You're getting worked out. You're degrading people who are human beings over a game. So if she heard it, I don't think she's gonna fucking lie about some shit like that. You believe everybody's human. You don't believe in the. I know you, you probably get heated on your sports games and shit, you know? Oh, I get oh I get someone heated. Someone sucks and someone I get fumbles. Heated and, and I'm someone... like, yeah, you know, what the fuck are you getting paid for? But I'm not over here calling you out your name. I'm not over mm -hmm. here, like, calling you racial slurs. I'm not over here, like, at the end of the day, you are a human being. And, at, and I don't know. After that undefeated Patriots season, I literally, like, decided I will never let myself get that emotionally invested I'm not going to talk about my company because that's different. I do still get worked up for that. Yeah, yeah. I'll be worked up the day on my shows and shit. But in sports, like the Patriots, Celtics, Red Sox, I, d I can't let myself get that emotionally invested to where I want to fight people over that shit. It's, uh, these people don't even know my name. Mm -hmm. they, they can't even hear me yelling at the TV. They can't even hear me when I'm at the game. So what am I getting them I got a question so for you. worked up for? So you say everybody's human already. You know what I'm saying? Do you have a celebrity that you would ask... Your wifey to let you, you know what I'm saying, like a one night stand, or like she took you on stage with grind on you, one little kiss, one little peck to, you know what I'm saying? Yo, I'm still. Have you I'm, ever had that combo with your girl? Um, oh, uh, I'm I the type know. of guy like, I feel like if if it's their number one artist, like I feel like that one day I'll let them, you know, maybe I don't not, know, fought, maybe, maybe like, not recently, you know? maybe like back in the back in the day, like maybe when I was like in college, mm -hmm. I probably. Mentioned it, but like I'm OG with it too. So like I'm my my number one crush since I've been in kindergarten. I had a calendar of her. I had the crush on this woman since I was in kindergarten, and to this day, who is it? Jennifer fucking Lopez. Okay, like that's 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 my Would baby. Would your girl that's give you a minute on on the stage with Jennifer Lopez if you were the one chosen? Like like if you were front row chosen to come on stage, I mean, she'd have to. She'd have to. She'd have to. Okay, because I mean. Would you would a girl think twice about it if it was Trey Songs, if it was Chris Brown? I think like when I like I don't know. When I like when I hear girls like or when I see, even see girls talk about celebrities, they go way more over the top than guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I mean girls jump on stage throwing their panties and bras and shit. Like come on. Crazy. You wouldn't think twice about it. If Drake was like pointed you out in the fucking said, come stand, here, you come. running, crying. Fucking running, yeah. sprinting, hitting the Usain Bolt. Like I'm not asking for that shit. J-Lo tells me come up on stage. <laughs> what? <laughs> yes, baby. Yeah. All right, just making sure. Just making sure. Listen, this one goes for the relationships, man. And I don't I don't believe in this man and what this man has to say, okay? Because I believe in, you know, well, I don't believe in, but I feel like if a shorty takes me out to dinner, I'd probably wife it up. Because if she has different, you know, mindset, different morals of, you know, relationships and, you know, treating a man, I mean, if they take me out on a date once a month or something, I'll take them out. The other 20 days of the month You know what I'm saying Listen to this guy And let me know what the fuck You gotta think about this man Cause this man's an idiot And you could tell Actually we're not talking about His looks and stuff so I'm gonna say he's a drug dealer And shit but fuck it when you first meet a woman, you should be spending money. I don't want to hear your fucking excuse why you don't. Then you don't like her. If you're a single man, 100%, that means you've been saving and stacking money. If you cannot send Zells, pay for her nails to get done and hair done before a first date, or pay for some sheen items or fashion over, you should not be fucking dating. I'm tired of seeing all these grown men her on this first date. Oh, she got a proof. Proof what? Proof what? The women are the prize. What are you? 
We're just men. We're meant to work and provide. So if you're a single man looking to date, make sure that your checking account is in order. No, thank you. What do you guys think about my man? First of all, he first probably, date he, he said probably nails, made that video. That. He probably made that video to thirst trap. Mm. No cap. Get the he DMs popping. Oh, well, there was mad bitches in his comments and and, and DMs after that. Like, yes, King. Mm. Yes, King. Speak it. Like, he probably did that for a thirst trap for some viralness. I mean, you think that's true though? On a first date, send her for her I'm, nails, no, her if, hair. No, no, that's wild. That's what he's saying. If I'm taking you on a first date, obviously I'm gonna pay for that. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I'm taking you out. But am I gonna send you out? No, because part of like how you show up to the first date is gonna tell me a lot. It's yep. gonna tell me how you present yourself. Oh, it's gonna tell me how, how you know how you would go out in a more social setting. Like it's gonna tell me a lot. So I would let you do that on your own because if I see the hair, the outfit, you know, like like I said off rip, that's gonna tell me what I need to know. So, but would I pay for the date? Absolutely. Absolutely, but am I gonna? Hey, go get. No, you're not my shorty. You're not my shorty. What yeah. if? What if like yeah. mid date? I really want to walk out on you. And you already paid a two, three hundred dollars for what the hair. I'm just like, and the yo, nails. I can't understand. I can't even stand this bitch's voice. Mm -hmm. Like, what? Like, you know, or what if you came wearing some shit and I'm like, damn, I can't take this home to mom. Yep. Like, nah. So I've ripped. Okay, I'm gonna pay for the dinner still because I invited you out. But I know after this. You're not getting a call or text from me. So what if she made the plans and said, I wanted to go here? I mean, are you the one asking me out on a date? I'm, I'm not going to let you make... If I'm asking you out on a date, I might take where you want to go into consideration, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to let you make the plans. Uh, I mean, I bet. Are you approaching me and being like, hey, can I take you out on a date? And so at that point, I'm at kind of at your mercy. Where do you want to go? And yeah, sure, what's up? But I'm still not fucking giving you like... There got to come a point in time where... You got to separate regular girls from wifey. You feel me? Like, what makes this... If some regular schmegular girl that you went on one date with could say, yeah, he took me to get my nails done, my hair done, bought me this outfit, did the, and, but you're doing the same thing for wifey, you know, it's... How's... Nah, you got to be able to separate the special. Just like, you're not going to fuck shorty the way you would fuck wifey. Mm -hmm. It's just not going to happen, you know? There's a video. There's a video of uh, Fifty Cent. They asked him who pays on the first date, and he said, "Did she ask me out? And who, who, whose oh, idea was it?" I didn't even know that Fifty said that. Fifty said that, and I said, "Facts." Fifty so is an old ass video, and it, it always comes up every single year. So Fifty is thinking. Facts. So Fifty's thinking like me. Like, what the fuck you mean, bro? Like, whoever whoever asked who on the date, bro? Like, y'all want to go on a date with me? Let's go. I'm happy girls are to bold. not spend girl, $50, girls, $100. Are, girls are actually a lot more bold nowadays than they were back then. Like, I feel like back then they would never, ever, ever ask you out on a date. Oh, hell no. Now they're a lot, they're a lot bolder. Now, now. I'm now they're a lot out there. Yeah. They shooting their shots, too. Well, they know. They know. That's why they, uh, I don't want to talk about baby mamas. But the baby mamas be out there, bro. They be doing their thing to get their kings. Yeah, well, they also... Nah, I'm not trying to get canceled. They're big mamas. I'm not so. trying to get canceled, but yeah, they, you, I would say they're a little bit more desperate. They come with a little bit more baggage. <laughs> they come with a little bit more baggage. They're like, damn, I'm getting to that age. I got this kid. Damn, I gotta, I gotta get drafted. I gotta get drafted quick. That's well, how it I'm, is. Well, I still look decent. <laughs> so my boys only like big mamas because, no offense, they're easy. Whoa. Who said that? Ah, shit. You already <laughs> started, my boy. Let's get it. Where we at? All right, so this one is, we need to pay attention to this one very clearly. So there's a beginning part. We're going to ask We're gonna ask what you would do, and then there's a definition of what you answered. You know what I'm saying? So actually, I, I wrote it down. So it says, uh, how would you feel if a truck was driving toward you at full speed? So that's what she's going to say in the beginning. And then she's going to explain your answer. All right? Okay. So hear it clearly. So I already told you it. You have it in your mind. Take a deep breath. All right. This is like a little mental thing. Okay. What kind of type of person you are? You know what I'm saying? Hi, baby. I want you to answer this question with the first thing that comes to mind. How would you feel if a truck was driving towards you at full speed and you were standing in the middle of the road? Pause this and then come back to it when you have an answer. How would you feel if a truck was going down the road full speed 
Straight to you. What would you do? What's the situation? What's on your mind? What's going on? What would you do? What's on so your mind? Many, there's so many scenarios that have to like you have to like kind of answer before you can answer that. Like for example, but it's the first thing that comes to your mind. What was the first thing first that came thing to mind? Comes to mind is: Am I trying to beat that truck across the road, or am I just standing there? Like, his thing: If I know it's coming, and I'm like, "Fuck, I could hit this quick little sprint and and beat this truck." I've done it before. Mm -hmm. Then it's like, okay, but if I'm just standing there and I look and a truck's coming, what the fuck? <laughs> what if you jump out of the way and then the truck swerves out of the way and you're the idiot that just jumped into the swerving truck? That's not I the mean, situation. I'm just asking. My thing about it is you have to either have dumb, slow reflexes <laughs> oh, or not see the car, the truck at all for you to, to not be able to fully get out the way. Some people freeze, bro. People are different. Freeze it. If I see, like... Your, your life before uh, your eyes, man. Yo, I've leaped over the hood of a car before when I was running. Like someone tried to run like, you over? Nah, so back in my fighting days, in my amateur days, I had to make weight for a fight. I was having trouble making the weight, so not only did I have to run in the morning, train in the evening. After I was done training in the evening, I would go home and go for another run, like with trash bags on and mm -hmm. shit like that for more sweat. Um, I was running from... The South High School area to Leicester. And when I was in Leicester, there was a car that was, like, on one of those side streets. And, like, you know that main street, like, all the way from Bur um, Burger King on Park Ave? Mm -hmm. and like, if that main street goes all the way through, like, it's like a main street. It's called Main Street, but it's in Leicester. And so she's here. Cars are coming this way and this way. Are you talking about you, you walking, you running up the, like, the hills, like, the town area? I'm going towards Leicester. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm in Leicester at this yeah. point. Cause I lived near South High School at the time, and um, but she's on the side street, and I see her. I'm lo visually looking at her, only looking this way at the cars that were coming this way. She wasn't looking at the cars that were coming this way. But I'm not on this side of the road. I'm on this side of the road, so I could see the cars coming towards me. I see her look, so she's like this. She's looking this way. She never looked back this way. She just punched it. So because I peeped that when I was running. As soon as she punched it, I literally, like, slammed my hand on the hood of her car. Oh, you hit it? Like, oh, yeah. And, like, jumped over it. Like, she still hit me. In the, I had a crazy bruise on my yeah. ass for, like, uh, two weeks. Like, huge bruise. But she only nipped me in my ass. Mm -hmm. Like, imagine if I didn't leap over it. She yeah. probably would, took my whole kneecap off. Um, I mean, Chuck's coming at me full speed. Get out the way. Get out the way? Com like, not just... By an inch or two, because the car could swerve. Anything in your mind, though? In my Kid, mind. wifey, it, like, what's up, man? You about to die? Anything going on? No, it's, just, just, get, it's just get out the just way. Get out the way. All right. Let's watch the second part. Okay. If your instinctual response was to say something along the lines of, I'd feel terrified or I'd be frozen with fear, you're on the right track. However, if you said something along the lines of, I'd run out the way or I'd move, notice how the question was avoided. I asked, how would you feel, not what would you do? If you were in the latter group of answers saying what you would do, I wonder whether you have a tendency to intellectualize your emotions and feelings rather than just sitting with them. I was asking about the family and shit. I tried to give you a little, I was trying to help you out, bro. You know what I'm saying? You want to hear that second part again? I got it. You got trouble addressing your feelings. Do you? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. How does that, how does that make you feel? I'm, I'm, you want to you express your feelings I'm, now I'm about that? I'm getting better with it. As you I'm said, get out the way. You said you wouldn't even think about the kids or your wifey, bro. I said, what about the kids and wifey, bro? Like, in my but head, in, I'd be like... In the, in the heat of the moment, I feel like you're not thinking... Maybe you'd be like, oh, fuck. Maybe it's you'd my be time. scared. Maybe, oh, oh, yeah, it's my time. But, I mean, shit, I mean... I don't think you're thinking of specific people. You're just, you're either frozen or you're just like, fuck. Or like, what the fuck is this dude doing? What the fuck is this like, what is this dude doing? Like, you'd probably be confused. But if you hear the stories of like, someone walks up to you, puts a gun in your face. Yeah, but that's completely different. Like, it's, a, it's when the a, life a, truck, before, a truck driving flashes at you, before your eyes. I've had that situation. It's crazy. I was uh, 15 years old at the Honey Farms on um, Providence Street. My grandmother, do you remember that, I want to say maybe 2008, um, so I might have been 15, I don't remember exactly. 
They, remember that fucking? We were out of school for like two weeks, and then it led the to Christmas. Yes, mm-hmm. the ice storm. The ice storm. Yeah, yeah, when we lost power and shit. Yeah, like the whole city. People mm-hmm. were using shelters, like the high schools as shelters and shit. Yeah, yeah. That Christmas Eve or Christmas day, it might have been Christmas Eve because the honey farms was open. My grandmother sent me and my two aunts to the store to grab like milk, water, cereal, ingredients, and shit like that. Shit, she got stuck up at fucking at Honey Farms. The store? The store. It's not you guys. No, the store. Like, me and my aunt. So, I have two aunts that are, like, four and five years older than me. So, we're, like, grew up more like brother and sister rather than aunts. Mm -hmm. And um, we were dead ass sitting there arguing about what cereal we were going to get. And she got quiet. So, I was like, bet. I won. I went to go grab that shit. It was going on behind you? No, it was going on in front of me and I didn't know. So she stopped. She just stopped. Or she froze up. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, bet. I win. <laughs> I went to go grab the cereal. She was like, AJ, grab me just like that. Matt Hart. She said, AJ. I'm like, what? She's like, look up. I look up. Yo, this dude is like, with the gun. And the cash register, the dude's like, bah, bah. like the cash register, the dude's throwing money while getting forward hand and back hand with a gun. Wild. Wild. So then I froze. She drops to the ground, pulls me down, cause I just sat there like. And then so you wouldn't jump out the way. Nah, I did freeze right, but peep. He turned. He looked, and right when he turned and looked, my aunt had pulled me down. And my only instinct was to try to call my mom or dad and tell them I was gonna die, because I was like, damn, we made eye contact. I'm a witness. He's going to come through the aisle and pop me right now. Mm-hmm. So I was like, damn, I got to call my mom and dad and say bye. But neither. And now you're just jumping out the way. But back in the day, so where where the trauma come, bro? Talk to me, man. I mean, a, a gun is a little bit different than a, like. Is that, did that start? That, that's a bad, that's a bad situation because you can avoid that. Like for you to be jumping out the way from somebody shooting you, that's a whole lot harder than jumping out the way of a moving car or a truck. You know, if they said, oh, somebody showed up at the store that you were at and had you at gun range, what are you going to do? Now it's like, damn, yo, homie, can I call my, my family and tell them I love them one last time? Like, something like that. That's you know? what I'm saying. That's valid. I mean, that, but also, like, if I have my shit on me, then I'm, I'm going to try to pull out first. Like, whoever gets it off first. All right. I'm, but, I'm like, by the way, I am licensed, so that's why I, I don't want, I don't want cops see this shit and be like, clip it, get them. Um, <laughs> nah, but what I'm saying is, if someone sees a gun, they just run, and they get out of the way, they dip. But you just said you could try to be like, yo, homie, can I call my family and say goodbye? You know what I'm saying? How you feel in that moment? Yeah, you feel like you about range, to leave your family, close, fam? Yeah, close range like this. I mean, if I feel, I would, obviously, I'm not going to, just let me call my family. That's what I'm thinking. But at the same time, I don't know, until you're really in that situation, you don't know. I might. Shit yourself? Hell no. <laughs> I might just be like, I'm going to go down swinging, like with a boxer's okay. mentality. Like, yeah. he might pop me before I get to pull my shit out. But I might at least try. Mm-hmm. Surprise, motherfucker. You need a hug, man? <laughs> nah, I'm good. It's okay. We'll, we'll hug it out after this. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's okay. It's okay. You made you made it through the first segment, my boy. How you feeling? I'm feeling good. Should we make another swig? I'm not swigging those. Those are nasty. You think this is nasty? You fuck with it? I mean, I'm I drink on my the like mix. second and a half cup or some shit. But I I, I drink. The, you like the mix at least? Nah, I'm just getting juice on top, and then I'm getting all liquor at the bottom. I'm bugging it. It's there's not something, that thick there's, there's something that you're not doing right. Yours looks darker than mine right now. I don't know. There's something you're not doing right, bro. I'm not doing it right, right? I'm bugging. Sure, you don't want to hug, bro, before we continue? I'm good. I'm good. But sure. I do I, I can I can properly admit I do not address my emotions enough. Well, she got you there. You don't have to say it. It's already clipped. It's yeah. already ready. You don't have to express it now. We knew that. <laughs> I, was, I was trying to help you out. I said, what about the family, my boy? So what are you doing? The family, my boy. What are you doing? Well, this is that first instinct. And, and Your first instinct. But I'm like, when you hear it for the first time, you know what I'm okay, saying? Okay, when you heard it for the first time, what was your first instinct? I don't know. I think I said, said move out of the way, too. Ah, uh, so do you uh, need I'm honestly, a hug? Yeah, I do need a hug. Should we be uh, going to meetings together? Uh, we should be going to meetings. What kind of meetings? Like therapy meetings? Mm. Shit. 
sit in the circle, talk about your problems, one of the, like the attic ones. I feel you. You know who I think would fit in very well is all the fighters. You guys, they, do you do that? Nah, but they hide. Like, that. One thing I did notice is like a week before the fight, hiding the bro? emotions, hiding the emotions and, and things that you're going through. You don't even notice it when you're a fighter. Yeah. Like I didn't know that I had like seasonal issues until I was done fighting. What does that mean? Like my mood is based off of like the season. Like in the is winter time, I, I yeah yeah, it is, it is. Like not that I'm grumpy all the time, in the in the winter or whatever. But like, I just I don't fuck with winter. It's not my season. I fuck with it's not. I'm less motivated. I'm, I'm not, I'm not really fucking with winter. I think that's a Massachusetts thing. Could be. Or New England then North. A lot of Easter. people say they love the four seasons though. I'm like, I love winter. You're out of pocket. I love coldness. You see, you're out of pocket. And if you got the right heater and shit, you, you should be bad. You're out of pocket. What 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 what's what what is? I'm a January. I, I was born in January. Ah, uh, I'm a Capricorn. Probably why? Probably why? I always like the cold. I, I wear shorts in like 50 degree weather type vibes. Like, yeah. So uh, I I'm getting older now. We can't do that because we'll probably I, die. I, but I questioned you, bro. Back in the day. What's so like, bro? Your car is at more at risk of getting fucked up in the winter time. Well, I already had that mindset, bro. You got to get the all wheel drive, my boy. You know, get the get the winter tires. Not, I know. Here is deadly, bro. I used to be skidding like, nah, okay. bro. Winter time's not it. You can't even do nothing outside. No, no state fairs. No amusement parks. No, just being outside ain't even fun in the winter time. Sledding bro. is fun. And then, you're, and then you're inside So like if, if you Like let's say Like a Saturday night you're Watching boxes or something Everyone gets snowed in You have a fucking Like slumber party Everyone's vibing Everyone gets fucked up No one's driving home It's valid I Nobody feel like Nobody wants to come To your house No but I'm saying Like let's like say Like I did a December show And it snowed And like we sold Way more tickets Than what actually Was showed up. there Like I felt bad Like I know for a fact There was people Who bought more tickets yeah. Than what was actually there? But shows I'm different. Like, I'm talking damn. about like, like your own crib. Like let's say like a thing's gonna drive to your crib. In let's a say like Christmas. Time. Let's say Christmas. Like you with your family on Christmas. Yeah. And someone, let's say they live in Rhode Island, and then they're like, oh, there's like four inches of snow. They're like, oh, let me just ca- yeah, cash I mean, in the couch, yeah, and then you you up till different. six in the morning with family and shit. No, it's not different. That's what it is, bro. Like it brings in family, bro. Like I said, you I watch your box outside. Separate family too, because yeah, I've yeah, spent yeah. Some, for like a couple months. I've spent some snowstorms by myself, like. Nobody trying to come over. Who's Nobody can even get to me. Why didn't you go to them? Because I couldn't get to them either. What the hell? Time, especially, I was driving like a Nissan Altima. That bitch was a death trap. Death trap. I don't know. I know a couple of my boys that just bought brand new cars. I'm like, bro, get a all wheel drive. You live in Mass. Oh, yeah. All wheel drive, drive is lit. All wheel drive is lit. I got get a fucking drive Jeep now. or something. Like, I've been driving an all wheel drive since 2016. Man, you can't stop, man. You got to keep now, going. Now I won't go back. Are you sure you like this shit? She just got one. That personals. I thought this shit was juicy. We just fucking kill it. It's not bussing. It's not bussing? What? There's a whiskey one of this, I think. Or like a darker bottle. No, no, you're not making Maybe you're not. A, are you a grape juice fan? No. That's why. I, you know, I just found out about grape juice the other day, and they're pretty fire. You have, have you had grape? Like, not grape juice. The grapefruit. Have you had a grapefruit? Before? Yeah, I eat those yeah. all the time. They're OD. I didn't yeah. know. But you don't like the juice. No, I just, I don't buy the juice. Oh. Uh, like, the juice is fire. Uh, no, nah, this mix is. I told you you could have went with mixing te- it tequila and pacha. I know, but then I threw up tequila last time. Oh, yeah, then going down smooth. Are you ready for the segment, my boy? I am. All right, so since you like this shit, let's swig it. I need to get lift. <sighs> Ugh. Yeah, straight is not as uh, straight is not as good. It's like a syrup. Yeah. All right, listen, man, we're in the doggy down segment. We're Ooh. talking about relationships of the week and who flopped. Explaining the story and feeding my opinion, or asking my guests about their opinion and what they would do in that situation. Are you ready for the situation, my boy? Sure. We have Adam Levine names his future newborn son after a girl he cheated on with his wife. All right. You got anything to say about that before I show you what that means? His girl ain't Hispanic. He would be dead by now, right? You wouldn't even, that wouldn't even cross your mind if your Mm. girl was Hispanic. I like the way you think. That's wild. 
That's wildly disrespectful. Cheated on his girl. And he wants to name and his newborn. And he's married to the. Is he married? He's married. He's married. He's a married man. Yeah. So it's not like he's got a girlfriend cheating on. The, no, no. He's married, and he had the audacity to name that kid that he's birthing with his married wife after the side piece. He's married, has a kid already, and is having a second kid, or a third one. I don't know, second or third. And the side piece's name, he wants it to be the newborn's baby's name. Crack, crack is one hell of a drug, man. He must be doing something, bro. That's wild. That's so wild. Mm. So wild. Ready for this? First of all, I'll go, go. I'm ready. I'm you, doing. You wouldn't even want your married wife to know about your side piece, let alone even draw any kind of clue or anything like draw like. Let like, me ask you this. So like, I can't even fathom that. I'm how, blown. I'm mind blown right now. How do you think they found out that he wants to name his newborn after his little side team? Because probably after he got her pregnant and they were thinking about the names, she was like, "Um, hello, yeah, my name is um so and so." And then she was like, "Oh shit, this bitch's name is the name that he wants to name our daughter. What's up, so and so?" So you She's think like, the wife? Yeah, I'm going to let you know that me and your husband done been fucking for okay. this amount of time. Here's your receipts. All right. That's what have gone down like that. It is, that is how it goes down. Yeah. All right, cool, cool. All right, ready. That's the only logical way. Like, how else are you going to find out, you know? All right. Ready? Fuck this piece of shit. After I stopped talking to him over, you know, a period of months, this is uh, how he came back into my life. He said, okay, serious question. I'm having another baby, and if it's a boy, I really uh, want to name it Sumner. You okay with that? Dead serious. Um, <laughs> is her name Summer? So, Sumner? So, like, Sumner, yeah, something like that. Sumner. I'm in hell. Like, I have to Somewhere be in hell at this point. <laughs> I mean, my morals were unknowingly compromised i was completely manipulated i handled this privately i never wanted to come forward because obviously i know the implications that come with doing what i do making money the way i do and being an instagram model she's a bad um so being no, tied to a story like this it's like only i know the stereotypes oh. but it, she said making money the way i do is she like a whole of only fa- only fans oh. she's making bread off only fans oh okay you know what's funny so i follow like if there's a topic that happens and i'm i'm covering it I'll follow the people because there's always like something that happens after or a little story or a little photo or, you know, someone gets jealous. Someone, someone does something stupid, right? Uh, I already followed her because she's valid, bro. I've been following her for like over a year. I said, oh, my God, let's get it. I was like, oh, damn. And then so you, this you switched dab- up my whole video. With snowflakes? You dabble with the snowflakes? It's not, uh, yeah, she's valid, though. She's super valid. I don't, I don't fuck with I like snowflakes, but I don't. I don't. She's like, I, he was about to say, I, I don't fuck with her. I like, I like them, though. <laughs> you uh, can't even. Let's you, know, do. you can't decide. So, I was gonna what make. What are you bringing home to Mama Dukes? I want to bring her a nice Dominican traditional woman okay. to keep it in the family. But Not just his Hispanic in general, it's got. It has to be a type of a type of Hispanic, yeah. Okay, at least Hispanic or Latino, okay, whatever. Right, word. If you're technical with the words, but um, <laughs> so I was gonna make a story about Adam Levine. You know, general topic. Everyone knows oh, Adam Levine. Yep. And then I was like, oh, like this guy's crazy. He's about to name her after some side piece, whatever. So when I went to follow Adam Levine and I went to go follow her and I was like, yeah, I already follow her. So I changed my mindset on how I was going to make the video. And I ended up saying that I don't blame him, bro. I would do the same shit because she was fire. You know what I'm saying? That's wild, bro. But it's because I followed because she was fire. You know what I'm saying? I get it, but that's still so wild. But uh, his girl, is his wife is a Victoria's Secret model. Skinny, you know, like... Lengthy she type of girl. Too bad herself. She looks valid. She's valid, but she's not thick. You know, she's not big, big titty, big ass type of wife. So listen, he DMs her, and she does all the DMs, verified DM, and all that, and was showing everything. I want to ask you, my boy. First of all, I'm hoping you would never do a side piece's name for your newborn child. It just makes no sense. Have Have you had like a like a key name that you always wanted to name on your children? Because I got Escarlin. Escarlin's always been a beautiful name in my life. And mm-hmm. some guy I used to work at a supermarket back in the day when I was younger. And it's like the moon or the why, light or some shit. I don't know why I always, always, always had. And it's crazy because it's so weird how life works. I've always had a boy name in mind. 
but I always thought I was having a girl mm -hmm. because my grandmother's got five daughters and eight granddaughters. I'm the only grandson. So I'm like, damn, I'm about to just be the doomed ass motherfucker surrounded by all these damn females. <laughs> and I was like, damn, I'm having a daughter. Like, I, like when I found out I'm having a kid, I'm like, oh, here comes another girl. For some reason, I always never had a girl name picked out. I always had a boy name picked yeah. out. Yeah. So did you name? Yeah. What was the name? Jeremiah. Oh, okay. And you never had a girl name in your mind? I always thought I was having so a girl. So wifey let you do Jeremiah? Yeah. She was fine with it? You said that from the beginning? From jump. Okay. He was going to be, he was going to be Jeremiah Jose Rivera. He was going to be a JJ. Mm -hmm. AJ. The Jose... Middle name is a tradition. Like, I have a cousin, Julian Jose. I have a cousin, Xavier Jose. My brother, Camilo Jose. Like, the middle name Jose is tradition because I have my dad and my uncle. Their first names are Jose. Mm -hmm. um, but then, I don't know. When I found out I was having a boy, I was like, I got to pay homage to my grandfather who had, God bless his soul, only had daughters. And granddaughters. <laughs> so I'm like, damn, I'm giving him his first great grandson. His first grandson is giving him his first great grandson. There ain't been a boy in the family in 28 years. Yeah. So um, I named him, uh, his middle name is Julius. So it's still JJ. So he's still JJ. Okay. But the middle name isn't Jose. And it's, grandpa's Julius? Yeah. His or name is Julio. But um, in New York, so in Puerto Rico, everyone called him Julio. But when he moved to New York, before he made his way to Massachusetts, everyone was calling him Julius. Okay. So, oh. that's how that came out. Yeah, so, and I still to this day don't have a girl. But you know what? I'm one and done. So one and done? No I'm, more kids? That's what they were asking you. No, no, no brother, no sister you for the kids. crazy is they jinxed me. They jinxed me. I come here, you know, I should, this is all like, like a family establishment here. You know, even the... The older guys were on the boxing team as teenagers with my dad and stuff like that. So I just come here, pop in, visit every once in a while. Sometimes I'm dropping off tickets to the fighters for the shows. And I remember it was fucking Daniel. AJ's the African guy. AJ, when you have him, when you having kid? I'm like, Daniel, don't ask me questions like that. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not having kids. I'm like, I got shit. I'm like, they're too expensive. He's like, ah, they're not expensive. Everyone say expensive. It's not expensive. You know, you're getting older, da da da. Bro, I swear on everything, maybe like three, four weeks after that, I found out I was having a kid. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I mean, like bless these you, motherfuckers. Man. COVID got me, really. COVID took me out the game. Your pandemic daddy? Ain't nothing to do besides eating hump. Do you believe Do you believe um, that a kid is brought into your life because you needed a kid in your life? Absolutely. Absolutely. I believe. Is, I that, mean, is I believe, that another hug that I believe, I, give you? I believe in things happen for a reason, period. Not just kids. I believe in things, period, mm -hmm. happen for a reason. Like, you, like, I saw some crazy post one day that really put things into perspective for me. It was, like, it was, like, five or six pictures, but it was, like, all 9-11 passengers that, like, oh, this guy's alarm never went off, so he never showed up to work. This woman got into a car accident on highway, blank, blank, never made it to work. Um, this woman, kid, Ended up being sick, had to call in. And it was like mad people. Yeah. But there were people that worked at the 9 11 building. And it was like, you are exactly where you stop stressing. Mm -hmm. You are exactly where you are supposed to be. So now, that, like, if I'm late for something, That's you know, obviously time. I'm going with a sense of urgency, but I now look at it like maybe I avoided an accident. Maybe I avoided getting. Stuck up at a fucking gas station. Yep. Like you never, you just never know. Um, yeah, I feel like everything in life. Period. But yes, a kid does come into your life at the perfect time for the perfect reasons. Um, yeah, that's my little blessing. Do you ever thank uh, the people that get pulled over when you're on the highway? Like you're driving on the highway, they get pulled over earlier, and you're like passing oh, by. Oh as yeah. You, oh yeah. I'm like deuces. Yeah. Like, actually, matter of fact, that shit happened um, Saturday. Saturday, I was driving to Twin River to make my football bets for Sunday, mm -hmm. and it was nighttime. So you know how sometimes the cops be on the side of the yeah, highway? Yeah, yeah. At nighttime, in the daytime, you could see them from mad far. At nighttime, you can't see them until you're right there. But the car, but luckily I was stuck behind a car 
that kind of made me lower my speed. Yeah. And because that happened, you know, and we drove right by, by um, right by a cop. I was like, oh, I looked at my cousin. I'm like, thank God I was behind this car because I was easily, I'm, I, was, I was going faster than I should have been. But I'm not gonna say the number. We're not gonna say the number. <laughs> Back to the top of my boy. So we got your uh, baby's name, and you did make the baby's name, Jeremiah, right? Um, second part of it was, what do you, what do you, how do you feel about um, women that know that you're a married man, or anybody is a married man? Still do what they do with you, whatever you promised them a relationship, you promised them that you were single, you promised them whatever. And I don't know if you heard it, but she was like, I was manipulated and this, this, and that. And everyone's been flaming her because it's like the first one that we're like, yo, are you are you stupid? Like it's corny. What what do you what do you think corny. about those type of women that have corny the balls to say that at the end that they were manipulated? Corny. Knowing that you're a married man with kids. At the end of the day, nobody's in the right. Mm. Nobody's nobody's in the right, in the right definitely. But that shit is corny. We're both grown ass adults. That's like sitting there, like, oh, I only fucked them because of the alcohol. Come on, like, really? Yeah, you like, just, you get what I'm saying? Like, just the scapegoat shit. Yeah. Um. Oh, this was against my moral code. Okay, so it was against your moral code. Still did it the first time, right? How many times y'all fucked mm-hmm. after that? Yep. How many times y'all fucked after you found out he was married? Right. It's against your moral code, right? If it was against your moral code, the first time you found out, you'd have been like, yeah, I'm out. I'm good. Bye. But I'm, from the looks and sound of that, they probably had like a, a secret relationship. Yep. Like, That's always So no, nah, I yeah. don't feel bad and I think it's corny. Um, at the end of the day, adults are going to make adult decisions. They're going to make adult mistakes. They're going to do adult shit. But there ain't, some, there ain't nobody to blame but yourself. If you know what you're like getting into, like, you know, you you, you know, you know, and, and and frankly, when it comes to, and the only reason why I'm gonna use girls because there's not many rich girls that will look at broke guys, mm-hmm. but there's rich guys that will look at lower tax bracket girls. So, let's be frank here. If Adam Levine was Joe Schmo on the street with Shorty from OnlyFans, been showing him even the time mm-hmm. of day. Regardless if he was married or facts, not, facts, facts. he could have been single and she probably wouldn't even have been interested, you know? But he's Adam Levine. I don't know what's... I know who... I know the name. I know who he is, but I don't know who, like, what he's five. saying. Or, or, oh, yeah, okay. So, my thing is, like, she... You know, she knew what she knew. She mm-hmm. knew. Realistically, like, we all know... You, you know when a celebrity is married. You know when a celebrity has a kid. Yeah. We know Rihanna just had a baby. Yep. We know Jay-Z and Beyonce are together. We, you know, you know these things. Even if you don't want to know. We know when Kim and Kanye are together. We know they broke up. We know she was with Pete Davidson. We know they broke up. Even if we don't want to know these things, we're finally, like, I'm not a, I'm a sports guy. Like, all my sports people, like, like when I go on my social media, it's more like sports videos, sports mm-hmm. recaps. It's not really like, like your lane where you're more yep. pop culture. But I still felt like I know that Kanye wore from today. I found oh, him today. Shit. He wore a White Lives Matter shirt. <laughs> I don't follow him, but I, it popped up on the shit today. Yeah. You know, so you know. You know. Don't yeah. sit here and play like, I'm sure that marriage is not new. How long you been with that woman? The one that he got. That's what I said. She already, they already have a kid that's like four or five or whatever. So four or five. So he's probably, probably been with her for a decade like or some decade. shit. There you go. Yeah. You know, man, I didn't know. I didn't know. Come on. Everyone knew. he. I, I mean, I didn't know because I don't know who Adam Levine really is. Yeah. But. but that's what I'm saying. Do you think it falls more on the single person? I mean, you you're said both, everyone's wrong. You're everyone's both wrong, responsible. But I feel like even me. Does like, it fall more? I mean, does it fall more on the single person? I feel like it does. It, you know, I'm not going to say it falls more on anyone. It's, it, it falls because you know. You know you're stepping out. So, like, that shit falls on you. There ain't yeah. no way you around that shit. The single person, you might be able to get one over on the single person. Mm-hmm. You know, but how long can you get one over before? You know, girls be having them gut instincts. They just be knowing shit. Yeah. Like, I got this gut instinct, this motherfucking cheating. And they just be knowing. It's just mm-hmm. weird. Like, you know, my grandmother called out all five of her daughter's pregnancies before they knew that they were pregnant. That's some. Some weird shit, yeah. right? Like some woman and like intuition. Intuition. Yeah. Like they didn't even know. It's not like they were hiding it from her. They didn't know. She said, ah, you're fucking pregnant. Like, like, what, ma? You crazy. Let me go get checked. Oh, shit. I am. Do they do the hand thing? 
Like the fucking lines in your hand? No, no, no. My grandma just be knowing. She oh, be having okay. dreams. She just be having feelings. My grandma called me one time like, Junito, don't go out tonight. I she calls me Junito. Yeah. I had a dream something bad was going to happen. I'm like, just in case, I didn't go. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if something would have happened. But just in case, because I know how my grandma be. I'm like, you know what? It don't hurt to stay in this. this just one night. Just one night. <laughs> to be safe. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's on everyone. There's no, there's no one more to blame than the other. So, like, I was going to say is, I feel like as a single man, if I know that a woman in front of me needs a good night out, even the baby mamas, you know what I'm saying? I don't do anything at the end of the night. I, I let them get home safe. But I know that, let's say they have a man or the, their baby daddy stressing them out, and one day they just want to let loose. But I'm that type of guy to take advantage. I don't I don't care about that part. I'm saying, like, me as a single man, I'm like, Shorty's just trying to go have fun. Let me get her some drinks, have fun, get her home safe. You know what I'm saying? I feel like as a single man, and, and even if it's a friend or a random person, you know that there's something wrong at home. She's outside for a reason. Make sure you're not the asshole that fucks her while her man's at yeah. home with the kid. You know what I, I'm saying? I, I don't believe it 100%. Like... Not that it's any right or wrong cheating in relationships or whatever. Yeah. But marriages, never. Yeah. Because that's not just a pro- uh, a promise between you and him. That's a promise between y'all and God. Yep. I'm not fucking with God's promise. That's like, for me, that's an absolute no-go. Like, you married or I'm married, like, like that's like super, super off limits. I'm not coming into no promise between God and y'all. Like, that's, I feel like that's more enhanced than boyfriend, girlfriend. Mm -hmm. You know, it's still going wrong regardless, but boyfriend, girlfriend doing it versus a married couple doing it. That's just like, bro, come on. You you made promises in God's Mm -hmm. house. Are you a religious person? Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't call myself a, I believe in God 100%. You go to church on Sundays? Or whatever day you nah, go search. I mean, when I was younger, yeah. No, not really. Um, I just, I got trust issues now. You know, there's a lot of pastors out here stealing money from the church. Mm-hmm. A lot of pastors out here fondling kids. A lot of pastors Christian? out. Christian. Okay. A lot, lot, lot of pastors out here, you know, cheating on their wives with men, shit like that. And, <laughs> oh, yo, shit. wow. Like, so for me, you know what? My relationship with God is my relationship with God. You Whether I home, go man. to the house or not, I, when I'm on my way to work or whenever I'm saying, I still say my prayers. I got, you know, Jeremiah 29, 11 tatted right here. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm still You I'm pray a before your events? Um, I wouldn't say before my events. I pray in the morning time. Every day or? Yes. Okay. In the morning time. Like just, on your way to work? Just thank you, God, for health. Thank you, God, for uh, giving me another day for an opportunity to uh, grow and succeed. Then whatever I'm praying for, and you know, that's it. You know, um. You know, hopefully, you know, I, I did find a church that I really did like. Problem is, um, it's in Lemonster. Lemonster is like, what, like 35 minutes away? Driving early in the morning, no 35 minutes away to Lemonster. You know, when I didn't have my son, it was more doable. But then when I got my son, it's like, ah, oh, like, bro, my sleep schedule has been absolutely out of this world since having a kid. Like, I run on sometimes two hours. Like, between, like, I'm doing shows. I'm finding last minute, like, I literally had a fight fall out. I'm not even going to say which fight. I had a fight fall out Sunday. From, from the event that's about to happen? And had a replacement by Sunday afternoon. So I'm, like, on the clock work. At this point, it's, like, on the clock, round the clock, yeah. working, looking for guys. Um, some guys are in different time zones, so I might reach out to them in the morning, but they might not respond till me and you are done with this. Yeah. Now I'm on the phone all night with them negotiating. And so, yeah, sleep is. This won't make you enough to quit your job? Um, Maybe I, if you make some TikToks, it will go up. All right. Make the price of $100, I, I $750. Could, I could say yes if I was single. Like, no, okay. like not, not single. I could say yes if I wasn't a parent. Yes. But when you got another mouth to feed, insurance, like, there's just, for me, I'm, like, I'm playing it more safe. Yeah. Like, where my job, 
I work for the state. My son's dental health and vision, it's all covered. I'm getting a constant salary every week, every month, you know, on top of this. Mm -hmm. When I hit, I do have a number in mind. When I hit that number, I'm gone. Okay. I'm gone, 100%. If I didn't have a son, I would have been gone already. Yes. So I was going to ask you, why don't you do, like, monthly events? Is, I'm so, pretty sure there's I enough mean, boxers. It's just, it just because I would, honestly, you don't see these grades, bro? I worked in the nightclubs, bro. I, it's just, you had to do it every weekend. You know, not at that extent, but, but it kind of. You know, it's, it's nice, but it's like. Nah, it's, it, it would be way too much. Yeah. Be way too much. First of all, these you're talking about companies that do it weekly. These, these motherfuckers' fans don't want to see them once a month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They can't afford to see them once a month. It's yeah, not yeah. that they don't want to see them once a month. They can't afford them. You know, imagine having to pay. Let's say you bought, you know, for, for Kendrick Ball's fight, you bought an $80 ringside ticket. You're just gonna, now you're talking about he's fighting once a month. But you didn't buy eighty dollars for yourself because who goes to fights alone? Mm -hmm. You took your shorty, or you took your best friend, or you took your cousin, or your brother, or whatever. Yeah. You might be spent one sixty. You know, now you're talking about monthly on that. It's just it's too time consuming too, because like these guys need medicals. These guys, you know, opponents get suspended. Dude gets knocked out November fifth. He's not gonna be able to fight again till like January. Yeah. You know, so, nah. What I have thought about, though, is alternating boxing and concerts. So, like, if I did November 5th boxing, do, like, December 5th concert, and then maybe, like, January, February, probably, like, February 5th fight again, like, things like that. Um, but the last concert that I tried to do. What concert did you do? I try to bring Dave East and Don Q here. Oh, you did the Dave East event? Oh, that shit. shit was yeah, I don't know why you would choose Dave East and, the, and Don at Q. All. Even worse. Okay. Well, that's one genre of music that fucking like 1% of people listen to. Shit was hot at the time, man. I'm, I yeah, don't, for I don't, the 1% of people that listen to it. But you know what's crazy is? I thought like, you know what? Let me do something different. Because you know a lot of promoters. They don't care. No, no, but a lot of promoters would bring like maybe like one or two talents to open up. Yeah. I had like nine local. Like I was bringing like, mm -hmm. bro, Tyshawn Dion was on it. Ralph Way was on it. Kels DeChifa was on it. FOE Mello was on it. Like all whistered people. So I'm like, this shit has to blow up. Like this is showing love to the city. And Davies and Don Q is coming. Davies just dropped his album. Mm -hmm. So that's why his price went up a little bit. Because he had just dropped his album. Asura. Amen. As soup. You ready? Ready. Listen, you know who the Demilios are? Who? Demilios. Demilios. Yeah. Charlie Demilio, Dixie Demilio, the Demilio family. They're like the new generation Kim Kardashians. Okay. But they're like 16, 17. Most followed girl on TikTok. Oh, it's, a, it's girls? Girls, yeah. You said Dixon? Dixie. Di oh, Dixie. Dixie. <laughs> Dixie and Charlie And Charlie Charlie's a girl too Charlie's a girl too They were hoping for a boy <laughs> <laughs> Dixon and Charlie Oh day We're still in a relationship So get back in your relationship Tone okay. Boys Deep breath <sighs> Alright All right. Listen Shorty was uh, scared to tell her parents About her breakup With her, her little boyfriend at, at what age do you think Um did it matter for you to tell your parents or not? Or do you even, you never brought girls home? Did your parents even know about your shorties? What's going on? I think it doesn't matter. I think I had a past relationship that I, I learned. Um, think about it. I don't know. You've had a relationships, right? How many times do you tell your best friends, your parents, or any family members when things are going good? Oh, so-and-so treats me so right. Mm -hmm. I'm so appreciative of so-and-so. You don't have those conversations, yeah. right? When you vent, you're usually venting about something that went bad or something, an argument that's happening, mm -hmm. right? The emotions in which you said certain things are going to change, but they're going to still feel some type of way. So when you keep coming to Mama Dukes over and over about this girl, right? 
Oh, she did this. Oh, she just yelled at me about this. Oh, she said this. This it adds up for mom. For you, you forgive and forget. Now, before you know it, Mama Dukes don't like your girl. So I don't think it's important to tell them if y'all broke up or not. I don't think it's important. Like, that's one thing I learned from past relationships was like, I'm not telling my family, you don't know if we're good. You don't know if we're bad. You don't know anything. What you know is. Even right now? Is what you're saying? Right now, period. Yeah. Social media, period. It's not for other people. Like, inside, inside shit got to stay inside. Mm-hmm. It's not for social media. That's why I don't respect people like that go on social media. You're bashing your mans. You're bashing your baby dads. Like, yo, keep that shit in house. People don't have to know. Oh, you know, because then, because then, even then, because then you look like fucking Boo Boo the Fool when you're back with them or have a second or third or fourth kid with them. Yeah. Like, it's like, yo, you can't complain. You knew who this motherfucker was two, three years ago, and you hit two, three, four years later, you're having a third, fourth, fifth kid with them. Like, you think people change? Nah, I mean, people I, I do. I don't think people change. So, no, no. People change depending on the age. So, 17 year old self, 18 year old self of you. Think about you at 17. I'll talk about me. Me at 17, 18 is not the same person I'm, I am at 21, 24. Me at 21, 24 is not the same person that I am at 26, 28. It, it's, it's just not. So, yes, people change. But now, when you're talking about a 28 year old or a 25 year old, I, I just feel like when somebody, when some certain people not, nah, certain people don't change. Yeah. So you just have to gauge that, you know, and and don't ignore red flags. Don't you know if if like another thing that I hate when people do is like, oh, I thought he was gonna be this. I thought he was gonna be that. And it's like, well, did he show you any signs of? You know, I can say till I'm blue in the face. I'm going to be a world champion boxer, right? Mm -hmm. But if, Shorty, you don't see me waking up at 5 in the morning to go running every day, if you don't see me in the gym every day, if you don't see me dying in every day, at one point in time, are you going to check me and be like, yo, I thought you were going to be a boxer. Mm -hmm. You have to work towards what you're saying, you know? If you're seeing the work, yeah, then people, somebody, somebody might grow and change and whatever. You know, if somebody's got anger problems, but they're seeking anger management or therapy... That's a person that wants to change and is trying to change. But come on, it's when you don't see no pro, like it, it doesn't. It's not you don't have to be blind. Like come on, it's just you don't have to be blind. You can see like this person ain't gonna change. Yeah, that's a, I make sure people tell me their their responses. I don't believe people change. Like I said, it just varies. It varies, and I've seen people change. I've seen people change. I've changed. You know, I've changed spiritually, mentally, my thought process, like. You know, there was a point in time where, like, I felt like shit was carefree. Like, you know, I always had goals, but life was more carefree for me, you know. Now, for me, I'm like, <laughs> matter of fact, I was sitting with, like, two of my friends the other day. And, like, one of my friends made a comment. Like, I had said something, and they were like, you're, like, one of the most financially literate friends I ever, I, I have. Is that about you? About me, yeah. Because I'm, like, the only friend that will sit there and be like, yo, Y'all peep this stock went up or this stock crashed today? Mm-hmm. And like, no. No, I'm like, you motherfuckers buy eighths every day, but won't fucking put forty dollars to the damn stock market. Mm-hmm. Like, come on. Y'all buy that shit every day. Times your eighths five days a week at forty dollars. I don't even know if they're still forty dollars. I don't know how much they are either. Yeah. It's forty dollars forty dollars still. <laughs> Probably like eighty now. <laughs> whatever they might be, whatever, but you times that times four times mm-hmm. you know, five well, five times four is twenty. So 40 times 5, 200? Fucking, you can't throw 200 bills in a week into the stock market if you can blow it into fucking butt? You know, it's just things like that. Like, if you're not growing, Muhammad Ali has a quote, and I can't really say it exactly, but it's basically like, if you think or act the same way at 35 as you did with 19, you wasted this many years of your life. And it's true. If you're not forever trying to grow... Mm-hmm. And progress, then you're just wasting time. You're just wasting. You should always be wanting to grow. No matter what. One hundred percent, my boy. Can you put some ice in that bitch? Takes up space. <laughs> I'll, I'll let you pour out. Oh, the goon squad. Yeah, I'll be. The goon squad popped up. The main thing. 
What did Jermaine T guys say? Jermaine T, look at this. These, these are the guys I was talking about. In the beginning when I mentioned uh, Kendrick Ball and Rocky Gonzalez, those are the two guys. This is the man that owns the gym on 55 Millbrook Street. You already know. Put your kids, women's classes, men's classes. Come see him. This is Jermaine Ortiz's trainer, Rocky Gonzalez. Big fight October 29th. That's it. We're ready, baby. We're ready. Eddie, tell him who you are. He's Who's everything. Eddie? <laughs> He's everything. Eddie's the manager. Eddie's gonna, you got to pay for this man's interview soon. I'm the manager right now. This guy making me hot. You're the big daddy? You guys making me hot. I needed everything. I needed everything for Eddie. Tell him, tell him a little bit what you do with the Pirates, too, because you do with everything, you know? Yeah. You dibble now, with everything. No, yeah, bro. Now it's boxing time. Now it's boxing time. It's boxing time? I got nine. I'm going to go to I like it. Thank you, baby. He said you look like that good. I speak the English, yes, sir. Okay, me too. <laughs> Stupid. Eddie, you hungry today? Every time I see you, you hungry. Yeah, I make it. Why? Wow, what you got here? Get it. Get it. I got pitoro in my house. Oh, you got so you don't want none of that? Yeah. <laughs> what are you talking today? Maybe look. Everything. Try it first. Everything. And we'll tell you in a minute. Everything. Try it first. Too sweet, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I don't know. Juice, not real liquor. That's real liquor. I said Hugo, Bobby. Yes, yeah, juice. <laughs> Look at the percentage. <laughs> I told them bacha tequila too. I gave them options. Too sweet, man. For me, for I said for it. I said for it. Yeah, Um. Come on, chill, bro. Look at the percentage, bro. That's that's real liquor. See you later. See you later. We don't need it. <laughs> Shout out to the show. <laughs> Shout out to the show. <laughs> I thought it was too sweet, Eddie. No, bro. Uh, he's for the lady. Eddie got all the ladies. And, and his white bands. I'm <laughs> Saki. You want some more grapefruit juice? You go training with Jermaine? How you gonna go training with Jermaine? Something wrong, bro. Something wrong. Drake, here, Drake. Drake. Yeah. Como Drake, eh, Drake. Eh, que, que canta. Yo, yeah. you, Dominican John got them kind of <laughs> contacts. <laughs> Sorry to <you> bring Drake. <laughs> here. Ah, <laughs> right, boy, let's get. And he really drank the ball. <laughs> we don't need it, bro, because I barely touched mine. All right, so private relationships. I had to tell your parents. We already talked to the parents side. Let me show you this little video, and then we're gonna get into it. Oh, yeah. He really did it. Oh, uh, Eddie, <laughs> With the bottle. We're not really talking right now. We've like come to that conclusion, but that we just shouldn't talk for a little bit. But we're broken up. So she was scared to tell her parents, but the point of this conversation is my boy, is she had a relationship with some dude and then they decided to go private on social media and they're both, take it off my boy. And they both have like 20 million followers on social media. And they're like, oh, we're going to go private. We don't want no one to know about our relationship. Okay. What do you think about private relationships? I know you said that you want to tell your parents everything, but I'm saying like. I believe in private relationships. You, if I go on your Instagram, it's just you shirtless with all your tattoos. And I, you look like a light-skinned single man. And if I seen you at the bar by yourself, I'm trying to pull that. What do you think about not posting your shorty or not posting your lifestyle? I what believe do you think in about? private relationships. Why? Energies. Energies. Not everyone wants to see you succeed. Not everybody wants to see you grow. Not everyone wants to see you prosper. Okay. Um, not everyone deserves to see my wifey, my son, my whatever, you know? So what you see on social media is what I allow you to see. Mm -hmm. um, for me, if I'm, I understand the power of... So, like, I would delete social media, period, if I didn't have my company. But I have my company. So, therefore... I need it. 
And because of that, yo, come say what up. How about Eddie, Eddie Cannon and all them do say what up. You got to come say what up. My brother from another mother. What's up, baby? What's up, camera? Tell the camera what's Big up. Daddy and what's, in the building. And, and what's going on October 29th? Uh, uh, uh. Make sure y'all tune in October 29th. Main event on ESPN Madison Square Garden. Let's, right get, it. Let's get it. Let's get it. You know what's funny, bro? Yeah. I got floor seats, right? Yeah. And this guy messaged me like 10 minutes later. He's like, yo, what seats you got? I'm like, I'm like, E1234. He goes, I'm E. Five six, we're sitting right next to each other. Yo, right, yo, that we bought the tickets like completely far apart from each other. It's crazy. Uh, I love you, baby. Right, you go home, baby. Huh? Go home. Well, I, see my I, came from Dubai, so I thought you were doing road work. You said you about to do some road work. Yeah, I'm gonna chill. I'm gonna you look mad skinny, bro. For an hour. That was good. Spend time with him for an hour and then go on some late night road work. So I'll probably see you by the time you get back to the crib. No ice creams. I'm hey, gonna buy you a big hey, tub hey, of ice cream hey, after. Hey, hey, my telly, my telly in New York's for the weekend, so we celebrating after together. Private relations, my boy. Hit me. What happened? Yeah, nah. Like I said, I believe in energies. Not everyone wants to see you win. There's a lot of jealousy out there. Even if you are posting your shorty, you know, there might be people trying to blackmail you. You know, oh, your man's just flirting with me. Your man's just, just keep that shit private. You know, this whole new generation believes like, oh, if it ain't on social media, it ain't real. Mm -hmm. Nah, fuck you And fuck what you think Do you think there's an advantage of having A not private relationship, an open relationship Like social media relationship Is there an advantage? No, there's no advantages I know that guy, my friend That's the godfather That's that jefe That's the, the jefe, the one who started it all Carlos, I love you Carlos, you wanna say something Cuando to the la fiesta? Carlos, you wanna say something to the Cuando la fiesta? Come on, say something. Just say something. Cuando to the la fiesta? Tell, tell the camera how much you love us all. The retirement party. When is it? Family. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. You took my dad off the streets at how old? 15? 15. You took him off the streets. You. Grandfather. They one of the special ones? Huh? They one of the special ones? He was always This guy never the father. Never in trouble. That's right, Carlos. Never in trouble. A lot of people thought a lot of people try to say I was a pain in the ass. Was I a pain in the ass? There you go. He don't know nothing about I never had to throw him out of the club. Okay. Never. I never had to punish him. Never had to punish me? And you know what I used to do to the guy? Make me go swimming. Make, make me do drills. Make it 10 out. But this guy, you know, oh, I don't see you or what. It was good. It's like, When's the retirement party? Huh? The retirement party. 15. Yeah. 15? Yeah. Oh, the RSVP? Yeah. Carlos, you know what? I don't, even, I don't even think we should do a hall. I think we should go to City Hall because there's so much people in the city that love you that no hall could fit the people that love you. You changed some, like, so many lives. It's, it, I don't even think you realize. But you're not really, but tell them the truth. You're not really retiring. You're, you're just not? retiring from the club. No. Oh, okay. Well, he's he still said, in the I'm game. Not he's still he said, in the I'm game. not leaving boxing. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he said, no, I'll be here. <laughs> Can't quit. I still, I, st I still debate coming back every day. I'm like, you know what? Today might be my day. Let me just get back. Let me get back. One day, one day, one day of training, my shoulder hurts. I'm like, ah, oh, shit. You know, I, I feel <laughs> more than proud to, to know family like that. Jose Rivera, the family, to me, to my family. So, let's do it this way. And I always do it. 
I love you, Carlos. Take it easy. Have a good night. Have a good night, man. So is there advantages to private versus not? No. No. There's no advantages to social media relationships. There's no advantages to social media. Social media has desensitized human beings. Listen, my boy. If, if, if I've just met Shorty, this is what I do. I friend zone everybody. And they're on my story off rip first night. Ah, ah, ah. And I get the DMs later and be like, that bitch is a hoe. She was sleeping with my mans yesterday. And I'm like, bet. That man saved me. Okay. They saved that's me different. before I even try, you know. That's, but that's different. But no, because if you see a beautiful girl, you're like, damn, like, oh, like that's I haven't different. seen or no, heard about her. The and then if you're like, pop, 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 boom, whatever, boom. But you know what? At the end of the day. But it brings you back to the guy that say, says, pay for her nails, pay for her hair on the first say, date. Let's just say, what if she was a hoe when she was in high school, but she's, a, fuck? she's a wholesome, God fearing. If you're still in the city, woman right now. Let me tell you this. Someone said, let's say we're from Worcester. Someone's from Providence, right? Okay. And she had 150 bodies in Providence. You see? He already thinks that's crazy. I went to, I went to college in Providence. All right, just making sure. Oh, this my man got 150 like, bodies, I guess. Like Listen. <laughs> oh, she shit. moves to Worcester. Just moved here for a couple months. Smart. There's a podcast. The guy said, no one cares about her past because it's not guys that you're going to see every day and encounter every day. So like you said, if she was a hoe in high school in a different state, in a different country, comes over here and someone from a different country is like, yo, bro, like she used to fuck the whole crew. No one cares here. You're walking around with a bad bitch that no one knows she's brand new. You're going to introduce the world to a new clean woman. here's my question to you, right? She's a hoe. I'm not going with it. That's what you're asking me. my question to you. Uh, is Is she here to make you happy or is she here to make your friends happy? Because at the end of the day, if you didn't know who this bitch was... She must have not been that big of a hoe. She wasn't fucking on you and your crew. Yep. Otherwise, you would have known her from high school. Yeah. So even if she's from your city, you went to what school? Doherty? Doherty, yeah. You went to Doherty. She went to Burncoat. She was a fucking... Thotty McThotty and Burncoat. Yeah. Okay, cool. Boom. But she clearly wasn't a big enough thotty that you knew who she was. So at the end of the day... But okay, and then you found out through a couple... And here's the thing. My thing is you can't always trust... Um, That's true. You can't always trust the, you know, a lot of dudes. Oh, I could have fucked her. Yeah, I yeah, fucked yeah. her. I did this. I talked to her one minute. I talked to her. Yeah. I was in her like, DMs for 10 minutes. Nigga, you bought her a drink for fucking one night and she let you. Like, shut up. Like, things like that. And it's like, some girls grow from that shit. Yeah. I'm not saying, like, you should, yeah, be first in line to be like, I'm a wife, this bitch. I'm just telling you that some people grow. Some yeah. people change. Some people, you know, some girls start to value themselves. But at the end of the day, it's how she treats you, so, how you so feel with What do you think her? about the college girls? Their, their college phase. And they don't count that. They say, oh, I only got three bodies, but they really got like 25. College is wild. The, the, the 23 wild. or 22 other bodies from college, they don't count. <sighs> college is so wild. It's the same <laughs> thing. Just, yo, but you know what I'm saying? The college uh, phase. So the college phase, the whole phase, no, it's, it's the same thing. It's, it's the same thing. But you know what, though? I mean, you can't really expect anything less. You, there's a lot of people, believe it or not. And everyone's upbringing is different. Like, for me, like, like my dad never really hid me from, like, the world. So, yeah. like, I knew a lot of stuff early on. Mm-hmm. So, when I got to college, it wasn't like, oh, go crazy. Fucking freedom. But there was shorties out there that were like that. Like, yeah. oh, shit. The first time of freedom. Minorities. Yeah. I live in fucking Vermont and never seen someone dark skin. Never in seen life. someone that yo, yo, my roommate told so the very first day, me and my roommate, my best friend, Nike, he we we were like, you know what? Let's prop the door. We lived in a co ed dorm. Mm-hmm. So boys and girls. Let's prop the door open. Like we propped the door open, bro. So because we propped the door open, we're on the ninth floor. Our dorm filled in quick. Like, we were just basically the welcoming, like, yo, what's good? Blah, blah, blah. He told, like, one shorty was from Vermont. One shorty was from, like, upstate New York. He told them his name was Compton. So there was, like, these, like, pasty white girls calling my friend Compton. And they're like, Compton, Compton. Like, they were mad excited just to be around him. And then I'm like, this one girl was like, yeah, in my neighborhood, like, your closest, like, gas station's, like, 15 miles down the road. Like, there's, like, so for me, I'm like, damn. She's literally seeing two minorities for the, like her the first time. time. Hell yeah, yeah. Like that's what I'm saying. And I'm not gonna say everything, but you know, she 
She wilded out. She wilded out first time. Guac Guac 3000. I feel you. I don't know. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, oh you know, that, you just said roommate. So clearly you do know. I don't know nothing. Oh, uh, all right. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> so you've been in college. I've been in college, bro. I've seen it Which every you went weekend. To? Well, I went to Franklin Pierce in New Hampshire. But okay, it, but that's it was still- small, but it was Val. It was a small town, bro. We had a, like our own school parties, like own school Shout campus out to police. Johnson and Wales University in Providence. Shout out to to y'all because that school is valid. <laughs> so you already know what I'm talking about. Would you prefer they tell you their whole phase, absolutely, or you would not want to know about absolutely. the whole phase? Absolutely. So someone says, I just, I, for me, for here's the thing: not that I care, but I would rather hear. Something from your mouth than somebody be able to tell me from their mouth. Okay. So I'd rather know what I'm getting into, what you've experienced. Not because I care. Not that because I'm going to hold it against you. Mm-hmm. But I would just rather hear it from your mouth. So nothing catches me by surprise. Like, let's just say, like, yeah, one night I was in college, had a foursome. All right, cool, whatever, boom. That sounds, I can hold that and take that coming from your mouth. Mm-hmm. Imagine my my boy being like, yeah, bro, me and my mans ran a train on her, yeah. her like four of us deep. Now I'm like, oh. you prepared. But if I'm mentally prepared, so you rather I'm know. Like, you rather know. I rather know. Yeah. yeah, I'm not gonna hold it against you. I don't care. Cause there's shit you can hold against. You know, me. Who Tiana Trump like, is like, bro. I had a vibrating tongue ring. Yeah, I didn't ask. I know you told me, but I didn't, I didn't ask. Why'd you do that? <laughs> Man, I just wanted to say it again. I'm, I don't know. I'm not, but it's like, I'm not, you know, you can hold shit against me too. So it's like, I'm not going to hold shit against you. You know who Tiana Trump is? Yes. She had 84 bodies in high school. High school. And you were laughing about 150. She's probably at like four or 500. Nah, but that's wild. But I think it's like. That's so that. you said, ho that's, from high no, school. No, 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 She no, said, yo. No, there's levels. That's there's my levels. past, daddy. No, no, there's levels to what I'm saying. There's, there's levels. There's regular curiosity, and then there's Thotamus Prime. <laughs> We're not going for Thotamus Prime. I'm not a transformer, bro. I'm not about to transform this hoe to a housewife. All right. Nah, bro. No, I, just need, to, I need to make sure the levels. Le- no, no, there's levels. She passed the level. Okay. Your wholeness can be deleted. Uh, Sorry, you have to stay single for life unless there's some dumbass that wants to marry you. Because there's some people that will still stay strong, and I don't nope. know why. Nope, nope. And on top of that, like I'm a firm believer in like, like who you wife up got to be a representation of you, but it got to be a represent like. Your kid eventually got to like. Do I want my kid being bullied in high school because they saw Mama Duke's fucking. Gargling ten cocks in her mouth. Mm-hmm. Come on, no, that's wild, right, bro. All right, so you got levels. You got levels. There's levels. Right. There's, I, I draw no, a line. I, okay. First of all, I'm understanding, but I draw a line. Tiana Trump, I draw the line. Never. Lamelo Ball was wild for even entertaining that. Wild. No. <laughs> no. Lock in your your true feelings, my boy. Amen to that. I like that part. Wild. You made it, buddy. You ready for the last segment? Absolutely. One last wait for you. Shit. I mean, for you too. You want to go first? I'll go first. Go ahead, go first. Ah, that was baby. You over here with a flavor saver on your chin, taking baby ass sips. What I got my chin? It's a flavor saver. (laughs) 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 Uh. (laughs) Yo. (laughs) <laughs> Don't be yeah, the other one with the oh shit! Hurry up, put the bottle down, bro. I'm about to drop this whole table. Ugh. Whew. How you feel about the podcast so far, my boy? Hi. Shout out in. Got a couple clips in that bitch. Thanks. Ready for the last segment? Let's go. I think everyone left us already. We're the only ones in the gym. I'm pretty sure. I don't hear anything else. Music's off. Nobody's punching bags. Lights off. Oh, lights are off. It's a family gym. They want to get the fuck out of here. I got to explain to you. Listen, this is the Double D segment. This has nothing to do with the woman's features. We're not talking about titties or anything like that, but you know what Double Ds are. You already know what Double Ds are. I'm Referring not, to I'm, any I'm, female I'm that's popping that anyway. week, growing, blowing up, 
Not about her features, but referring to a female in an empowerment in a funny way and promoting a female in different ways. Okay, my boy. You know Christian Rock is and Blueface? Yes. I've been talking to them about them for the whole fucking year. I thought I was going to have to think. I, had to, I am tired. I thought I was about to have to think of a shorty I wanted to empower. I was like, damn. Do you want to empower somebody? I, I thought that's what you were about to ask me, so I had my thinking face on for a minute. I asked. I used to ask people, and then they wouldn't give me anybody. I'm like, what the fuck, I man? I can't think of nobody either. Somebody but, like your mom, ahead. Yes, your girl, I know whatever. Christian Rock. Listen, motherfuckers. I'm tired of talking about you bitch-ass motherfuckers. Toxic. So listen. Let's see what I got for... Photos and videos first before I say anything. I seen some shit on Twitter today. Ah, uh, yeah. So it's going crazy. Sex, she sex posted, tape. She posted the sex tape yep. after um, he post or after not he posted. I think got other. Me? Tell me, tell me. Other from what my Twitter said from like other shorty posted him in bed with her. Mm-hmm. So she took it up a notch. She was like, "Oh, you want to post him in bed with you? But well, I'm gonna post me." Fucking him. Mm -hmm. So that's what she did, right? Yeah. All right. All right, ready? So the queen of the night is the shorty you're talking about, Miss Tay-Tay. That's the the blonde girl that was in bed with Blueface. And I'm making her the queen because she's finally showing the dumb broads of this generation that Blueface is not a, you know, hold it down, I'm going to marry you type of man. And the shorty already has six, seven tattoos. Dude has a whole fucking show. With, he said he doesn't the, touch the shorties though. Bro, he does. He does. He one hundred percent does. She was one of them. He has a show just so he could fuck on random shorties that are that desperate. That's valid. I wish I was on that position. I'm just single. Not, but he has a kid and a baby mama. Listen, let me get to the point. Tay Tay is our queen of the night. Why? Because she's uh exposing the man, even though he doesn't need to be exposed. The video is muted because there's music in the background. But this is uh, what we were talking about. Miss Tay Tay in bed with what is uh, she? What is she famous for? Besides, she asked them to be part of the show, so she's nobody. She's really just a regular, regular girl. She's just a regular girl that yeah. she doesn't have no ties to him. Or no, nothing. she she literally said I DM'd him trying to be on the show, and she was on his show. No, wanted to be like oh. DM like first time DMing oh, you. He flew her out or something type shit. Yeah, and they started hanging out for like a weekend or whatever. Okay. The point is, Christian Rock tweeted on. August 10th, he officially asked me to be his girlfriend today. Save the date, August 10th, 2022, right? But then today she's tweeting, how is he a cheater when I'm not his girlfriend? But she just confirmed a month ago that she was the girlfriend, right? Other tweets are, the first one wasn't a sex tape, but then she actually dropped a sex tape on Twitter, like straight dick pounding, bop, bop, bop. And another tweet is... It's not that we are a couple. This is where she gets a little bit delusional about her relationship because she's still in love and still happy. It's not that we are a couple. It's that we are great partners when it comes to money. I'm loyal to people that present present for me. I don't know what that means. I conditionally love Blue. I'm just a great-ass friend with great-ass pussy and got a, a great plan with a nigga that's the only thing that matters, God's plan. This is after he, she already found out she's cheating. The worst part is there's another shorty in the in the picture, and I already told you that he is a baby daddy. And mind you, the setting, the time, and place of this video, and she's showing exactly that something's going on on social media right now. Their whole shit is stressful. Listen to this. Their whole shit is stressful. You good, cuz? Mind you, she got red hair. Wow, shit. <laughs> this whole thing's going on, and he's sleeping with his baby mama. So wait, that's not even the, the other... That's not either of the girls. Oh. This is the baby mama. A whole lot of shit's going on, and I'm feeling beat your ass, she said. So we got baby mama, we got Christian Rock with seven tattoos, and then we got a new girl that's that just exposed them. That's why it's hard to date BDs or BMs. BMs be holding on to that fantasy that their families are going to get back together. Mm -hmm. Holding on to that shit, no matter what the baby daddy does. That's why, like, I'll never entertain a baby mom. Like, that's my personal preference. Yeah, me too. I mean, I, whether I have a kid or not, like, but I don't hold on to ex shorties. Like, I'm not sitting here pressed about ex shorties. BMs, like, if their dad's like, hey, 
their baby dad's like, hey, I want my family back. That family we always imagined. Mm-hmm. Easy. Know, it's just us, baby, me and you. I changed. I'm the. But she's. In the second. In the second. Well, hundo. So, that's what that is. I feel like. And he's blue. You know, he's fucking rich, whatever. So she's gonna put up with a lot more than a lot of other BMs. Christian Rock. She booed she boo- she boo- boo- with the fool. She booed with the fool. She must have been. I don't know. Nah, cause I saw pictures of her when she was younger. She looked valid. She was valid. But I used to I follow her when she was younger. Cause I'm like, maybe I'm like, she got un- ugly girl insecurity. I call so ugly ugly girl insecurity. I call that shit when um when girls are like ugly in like middle school or high school, but they had like a late late yeah, blow yeah, yeah. up where they look bad as fuck now, but they don't realize that they look. She bad didn't as peak fuck back now. in high school. She didn't peak in high school mm-hmm. exactly. So, but she got that ugly girl syndrome, even though she wasn't really ugly. Mm-hmm. I don't know. She's weird, but. Cause she puts up with a lot, and the fact that you have to be like, "Oh, he officially asked me out," like that already puts insecurities and doubt in your relationship. Because yeah. who the fuck is doing that? Like, I wouldn't Especially even at that want. Age. I wouldn't even want a regular girl that I'm dating now to be like, "He officially asked me out." Like, you're my girl, you're not my girl, bro. That's it. Claim me my, or don't claim me. Like, are you fucking dumb? Who the fuck cares? Like, mm-hmm. why would you post that? That's like. So that's already off rip. Like you already had some type of reasonable doubt, or some like he been cheating. You know he been cheating, but because he asked you to be his girl, you were dummy excited about it. And then the blonde girl, I don't know who she is, what she is, but that's our queen of the night. She just exposed who he was. That's why she's the queen cloud of the night. Chaser, because she'll probably definitely she cloud chaser. Was she like on that cat stacks vibe? Who's that? You remember cat? Damn, it sounds familiar. Bro, Cast X was the one that was exposing dudes before it became popular to expose dudes. She was the original exposer. She was the original. Oh, she exposed like everyone. Like, what's like no, 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 like everyone. I can't uh. even. Off to, she's exposed so many people. I can't even think of them on top of my head. Like mm. she was the original exposer. Um, look up after we done. Like, look up Cat Stacks. So and she got literally famous. Like matter of fact, niggas haven't heard from her in a grip. But I just recently did see a video that still was alive? like, was like, yo, this girl's still alive? Oh, and okay. she was naming all these dudes that she's currently been fucking okay. with. And I'm like, oh, shit. She's back. But she was like early on. Yeah, like, yeah. like, dudes is lucky that technology isn't what it is and the generation isn't what it is when she was around because she was violating everybody. So, I mean, blonde girls just acting like cat stacks, you know? I mean, I don't know. My Who's wrong this- in this situation? You got three girls and one man. I mean, nobody. No one's wrong in this situation? Everyone's single? Everyone knows. Everyone knows. Like, you're not. You're not that not dumb. You can't be that dumb. You're not dumb. It's not a secret. It's, I mean, I don't know how much, like, I mean, come on. You know what Blue's doing. You know what he is. You see the show. You've either been on the show. Fucking, hey, he ain't hiding out. Fucking, I'm sure y'all are doing y'all things, too. Which is why he probably ain't even taking y'all serious, mm-hmm. you know. I'm, didn't he just? I mean, I don't really keep up with the shit, but didn't he like find some dude in, in Christian Rock's phone or some shit like that? Or well, it's probably the opposite, but nah, I'm pretty sure he like found out she was like when he was like I don't know locked or something. Found like she was fucking with another dude or something like that. But like, I mean, come on, ain't nobody exclusive in that industry, especially yeah. when your when your relationships out to the public, like. You got every man in the world. Like, I use Jay-Z and Beyonce, all right? You have, like, every man in the world wants to fucking fuck your wife. Mm-hmm. Celebrities included. You got every woman in the world that wants to fuck on your husband. Like, that's why I respect, like, yo, bro, you really don't know what's going on. Unless you hear some, like, shit or unless they release an album. Well, Beyonce really released the album that he cheated or some shit. Yeah, she did, but uh, if, yeah. if it weren't for that, uh. you wouldn't have no idea what's oh, going on. Oh, yeah, she deletes her right. Instagram, her Facebook, and then comes back when music comes out. What do you think about that? I mean, I, I, I fuck with it. You, you like the private life, but as a... So, since I'm in the social media lifestyle, right? Our rule is we have to show up. We have to show up for our fans. We got to show up for the people. got to reply and stuff. And I'm telling these little kids that love Beyonce, love all these artists and shit... That they're only coming back when they're dropping a single. They're only coming back when they're dropping an album. That's not someone you should be looking up to. They don't go fuck about you. And I know there's a lot of stuff that's going on in their lives, but like, you got fans to fucking, 
take yeah, to, to yeah, handle, to take care I, of. I get it, but at the end of the day, you're a human being. That shit gets tiring. You know, my dad was nowhere near on the level of Jay Z and Beyonce, but I still remember how frustrating it was to want to go out to dinner and have motherfuckers interrupting us for an autograph. Mm-hmm. I still remember how frustrating it was to be out doing some summer school shopping at Auburn Mall and have motherfuckers stopping us for a fucking picture or an autograph. You know, they're still human beings. They still have their lives, especially now that they what they have two kids now. They have uh, Blue Ivy, and I think they have one more, right? They, oh, have, no. they have a new baby now. So it's, you know, it's, they, they fucking they accomplish what they accomplish. Their parents now, they're, they're married. They're probably trying to fix their fucking shit that they had going on. And I don't know. I fuck with, I fuck with private life. I'm all for it. You know, on the Will Smith and Jada's pink advice? What? <laughs> oh, <shit>. What? <laughs> Don't get me started. I fucking love Will. Will's one of my favorite fucking... But besides Jay-Z, Will's up there with Jay-Z. Jay-Z's my favorite out of everybody. But Will's up there. But I done lost Matt. Like, bro, come on. You had this girl talking about entanglements. Have you fucking slapping motherfuckers and being like, I don't know why he did that. Like, come on. No, 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 no. That's that's all settery. Ain't a pussy that good or a titty that round. Mm. Amen. To be acting like that. Sorry. And my kids are older at this point, so there ain't no child support involved either. <laughs> Kick rocks. And you can't get nothing anyway because you already done talked about how you done cheated and called it an entanglement. So if I take it to the court of law and we get divorced, you're not getting none of my bread. Yep. You cheated. Cheating is a crime. Adultery is a crime in marriage. No, fuck that. Absolutely not. If I'm Will, I'm living my best fucking life. <laughs> I'm living. All my kids are you older. Love Will, bro. Hey, yo, all I my kids are older. They're triggered. all acting up. They're all being weird. <laughs> Wife's doing whatever the fuck she want to do. I'm Will fucking Smith. Are you fucking serious, bro? I'm living my best life for the rest of my years. On some rap Robert Kraft shit. You know what Robert Kraft did? You look at me crazy for a minute. I've, I've heard his name, but I don't know what he did. Robert now. Kraft is the Patriots owner. He's the oh. one who just got caught up yeah, with yeah, the yeah. happy endings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen that. Like, Lots of happy endings, not <laughs> just a couple. I mean, Will really still could bag shorties that like are our age. That is very true. You got anything else to say, my boy? Close it out with your promotions, your next couple events. No more artists, no concerts. Anything for the future? I mean, eventually we'll get back into the artists and the concerts. It's just got to be the right ones. It's got to be the right ones. Um, I Ice get- Spice? <laughs> <laughs> me and my man's, me and my man's just had an argument about her, too. No, nah, I'm not a fan. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Revere Promotions Entertainment, November 5th. Um, fucking four championship fights that night. We got top dogs fighting that night. It's... it's I mean, you been? Why don't you talk about them? You been been last couple ones. You been part of the last couple ones. Why don't you talk about it? You want me to talk about how I didn't know you sold out arenas and your promo sucks? That's what you want me to tell you? Yeah, go ahead. I forgot to tell you actually. What I want you to talk about. So we're starting a new thing. No more stories, reels only. And th- these are TikTok videos you sent me though. But I'm reels, gonna, TikTok, what I'm YouTube say stars. Before I let him finish, is know your lane. If you're a point guard, you're a point guard. If you're a center, you're a center. You feel me? I humbly hit this man up and we asked him down. for some shit. We sat down mm-hmm. for like two and a half hours at his crib. And that's one of the things he told me. Like, bro, I went to both of your events. I had no idea you was killing shit like this. No idea. And I'm like, damn, well, what more do I got to do? My point is, just humbly, don't, don't be too... Don't be too prideful to ask for help. Don't be too prideful. Bro, criticism is only going to make you grow. That's just... But go ahead. Talk about what you have seen. Amen. Jermaine's, Jermaine's on the same wave too. But anyways, what I was saying was, uh, no more stories. We're posting reels and he's posting the TikToks and hopefully whatever platform he's on. He's seen the fucking outcome of posting the dumbest shit or the craziest shit or the oldest shit. It doesn't matter what day it came from because everything is brand new on social media and content creation that we are posting it out for the world to see. We're not looking for local support. Local support is vague, but we're not looking for local support. My most viewed video is from my April 
My most viewed videos from my April show. Mm-hmm. I've had a couple shows after. I've had December. I've had, no, I've had August. I've had, you know, April. I had July, July, August, and December after that. Yeah. And my most viewed videos from April. 176,000 or something like that. Mm-hmm. And like I said, what I told this man is I didn't know he sold out. I know we do it. I know we did events. He was doing the events in my city. And I was like, bro, I don't, I never knew what the fuck you did. I knew you were at the Palladium. I thought you were at the small upstairs. Oh, shit. That's how bad I'm talking about. Like, I thought he was upstairs in the small little venue. And then the arena was somewhere, I don't know, on the stage or some shit. And this guy was selling out the whole fucking Palladium. So, to let you guys know, content goes very, very so far my, so, for, so, 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 for so, so local people. Me. Gem dropped me, right? So you saw the Palladium. Mm-hmm. You went I've been to, to the, the Palladium. I've been, done events at the Palladium. Yeah. You went to the Palladium. You went to my show at the Palladium. You went to my show at the Springfield mm-hmm. show, right? Like, for me, I mean, shit, I post almost damn near every day. What more did I have to do? And, and he forgets that he has 20 boxers on the card. That's minimum 20 videos he should be making tonight. Times five. You were doing the math earlier, right? Because... There's knockouts. There's bloody people, bloody shorts. There's uh, fans outcries. So the recap crying, video ain't crying. enough. The recap video sucks. We don't want recap videos. It's 2022. Fuck a recap video. We want someone walking up and tripping and be like, oh, this, you know, this bald guy just tripped on his so way out. You ah. weren't able to tell that I was killing shit the because way that you didn't I was killing shit. shit until you actually went. Until I actually was there. But I was posting. I was posting recap videos. Recap videos is not it, man. It hasn't been it for since I was in the club days. I, I don't even know what I was doing with recap videos. I don't need recap videos. One three sixty spin, bro. Every single night. If you, <laughs> the, the worst part is if you sell out an event and you don't do a three sixty video of your sold out event, you're an idiot. That's at, at the end so it. I gotta do a three sixty video. You didn't, that's one that's, thing you didn't it. tell me though. I said well, I gotta tell real. my videographer. One video. I gotta do a three sixty video. No, no, not your videographer. Your phone. Like you. Oh, I gotta do press my personal record. Phone. A whole 360. All right, and bet. be like, sold out event. No one else can come in. See you guys next event on blah, blah, blah. Promote your next date. Wow. Right. The bet. most simplest piece of content, and they still won't do it. Tell you what. If you're, if you're I'm going to wait for you that day. If you're, too, if you're too prideful or too sensitive to take constructive criticism, you'll never grow in business. I love that shit. I love two and a half hours of chilling, having him shit on me. I loved it. I had asked for permission first, but yes. But I loved it. And it helped me grow ever since. And I think it made our relationship better too. Yeah. I talk so, to him every day now. We literally talk all the time. All the time. Yeah. So like I said, either either um either man up or just don't be in the business industry. Mohondo. I like that. It's the Mega John I'm here with. King Rivera underscore. And you'll never see me drink this shit ever again in my life. <laughs> oh, I love it. 